It's senior weekend at the Gene as number seven Arizona comes to town for four against number 12 Oregon. Yep. He swings and hits it high and deep to left field. See you later. A walk-off home run for Rachel Sin. Her first home run since March 1st wins the game for Oregon. It's now or never for both teams. Arizona is finally healthy and hopes a series win will pave a path back to the World Series through Tucson. Oregon is 4-11 over their last 15 and needs a strong performance at home if they want to host the regional this year. One on one, Allison Rowe will be the righty for ASU against the righty Bowden. And she swings and hits one high and deep. Watch it fly to the wall, it's gone. Oregon and Arizona with so much on the line. For the call, let's head into Jane Sanders Stadium with Jordan Brenner. Game three of four in the series. The first two in favor of Oregon. And a big reason why, Brooke Yanez getting two wins, going 14 total innings in this series, just giving up one earned run, one little mistake to Hannah Martinez yesterday. She left the yard. But other than that, Brooke Yanez has shouldered the load in the first two games, and Oregon picks up two amazing conference wins. They're now 11-9 in the Pac-12. Arizona, meanwhile, they're desperate for a win, and that's where we are in game three of this series. And thanks for being with us, Jordan Brenner alongside Michael Streit. Michael, the time is now for Arizona. You can see them huddled together, just a players-only meeting on the right side of the field right now. What's being said in that huddle? This is a team that entered the season not just hoping to make the postseason or the World Series. They wanted to win it with all of their seniors this year. Yeah, Jordan, we can only mention that they're the best offense so many times before you also have to start to realize that on the road against ranked opponents and overall against ranked opponents, this team has underperformed greatly. And you talk about just how many seniors there are. This is a lineup with five seniors and, you know, the rotation has one as well in Alyssa Denham. There's so much pressure on this team to get it done this year. The stars have aligned. You know, this is kind of one of those years where you don't look at it as building towards something in the future. This is what you've built towards. For yeah. the Wildcats, this is the year that you do make that run, that you do put it all together. And that pressure, I mean, it just feels like they're feeling that pressure. You go on the road, you play big games like this, and you don't get it done. I think what's in favor is two things. One, this isn't a conference game. They've already lost their first two. I feel like that pressure is a little bit lifted. And the only time that the Wildcats have been able to score more than three runs in one of these games on the road in the Pac-12 against a ranked opponent, they six times, they've I think seven times now, they've scored three runs or less. The only time they're able to do more than that was in the non-conference game. After back-to-back -back losses to Arizona State, they put up 15 runs and got a mercy rule. So as you kind of just, if you're Arizona, you erase the past, you don't get the, you don't have to face a lefty, you get to see Samaria Diaz, and you just try to get that big number and get a mercy roll win, turn things around. Yeah, they're going, Arizona is with Hannah Bowen, who had the great game yesterday. Oregon, like you mentioned, Samaria Diaz here in game three of four, the second in the doubleheader. We're just about ready for softball. Arizona coming to the plate with this lineup today. Janelle Mionio, the left fielder, had a base hit in game one, her first of the series. Hitting second is Raina Caranco, the second baseman. Jesse Harper, the three-hole hitter. Deja Mulipola is the DP hitting fourth, which means Charlize Palacios is catching this game and hitting fifth. Malia Martinez at third, hitting sixth, seven, eight, nine. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, Carly Scoopin, and Hannah Martinez. That's the lineup for the Wildcats against Oregon's righty, Samaria Diaz, three and one. A 3-5-2 ERA in 55 and two-thirds innings, 70 strikeouts, and 20 walks. Though Michael, career against Arizona, and it dates only back to her time at New Mexico State, she's had a tough time with these Wildcats in 17 and two-thirds innings. She's given up 31 earned runs. That's a 12-6-2 career ERA against Arizona. Maybe today's the day that that flip she's definitely facing an arizona lineup that's searching yeah the big question is is arizona going to hit the reset button are they going to be able to say hey we've scored all these runs against samaria ds historically we're not seeing brooke yanez anymore 
And it's a totally fresh ball game, in which case, big advantage to Arizona, right? This lineup's incredible. Or do they still feel all the same woes as the prior two games where their offense has only been able to put up two or one run in 18 innings? I think this first inning is going to tell you a lot. I think this is a huge first inning for both Samaria Diaz and the top of this Arizona order. Well, here we go in game three of four. Mionio is in there, the pitch from Diaz. Wow, that is a heater. 68 for a strike, nothing and one to Mionio. Oregon defensively, they are playing shallow in the outfield. Hannah Delgado in left field. Deja Pink leaning left of dead center. Haley Cruz is the right fielder playing shallow as well. 0-1 to Mionio, swing and a miss. Chasing after 68, it's 0-2. In the infield, Rachel Sid at the hot corner. Alyssa Brito playing in at short, Ali Bunker at second, and Shea Bounded in at first. Valerie Wong is catching the second game of the doubleheader, which means Tara McGowan, who's in the lineup, will be the DP. And the 0-2, swing and a miss, got her upstairs. She struck her out. First K of the ball game for Diaz, and Mionio's struggles continue at the Jane. Yeah, Mionio's, like we said, went an entire month coming into the series without striking out, which I, is just incredible. And now she's had three strikeouts in this weekend. Next is Raina Caranco. Pitch is outside her 1-0. 357 for Caranco, a singular homer, and 10 runs batted in. Game one, Caranco was 0 for 3. Now the 1-0 to Caranco. Diaz comes in. Hits the edge away from the lefty, one and one. Caranco had a an 11 game on base streak entering the series. That has been disrupted in the first two games, the one one. There's a breaking ball at 58 from Diaz. Looked like a good pitch, but it drops low and it's two and one. Megan Raven will be calling balls and strikes. Ron Burkhart the ump at first. Jim Bertuzzi, who called balls and strikes yesterday, is at second, and Brett Higgins is at third. 2-1, swing and a liner off the netting left of home plate, and foul, 2-2. Two and, two. And, and Michael, I'd love to get your thoughts on the mindset of Diaz, right? She's, I mean, it's not a small sample size, Seven and t 17 and two-thirds against Arizona. How do you forget about that past and focus in? 2-2 two two to Caranco. Pitch is high and away, the count full. Yeah, it, she may not be able to do it, but what you have to do is just don't think about it at all. All that Samaria Diaz should be thinking about right now is what pitch am I going to throw to Reina Caranco right now? Nothing else about her history with this team, which, like we said, has not been good. Payoff pitch in. On the edge, that's a strikeout. Caranco goes down looking. The frame job by Wong. Two gone on the first. A great start for Diaz. How about that pitch, Michael? At the knees, on the corner, Caranco down looking. And in comes Jesse Harper, the shortstop for Arizona. And zipping in for a strike. Her heart is today at 70. Yeah, and Jesse Harper, the one Wildcat that can be happy with her hitting performance from earlier in this day with a triple and a double. Two for three, that was out of the four hole, now up to the three hole. And the 0-1 misses outside, one and one. Trying to avoid letting Samaria Diaz strike out the side. I talked about how crucial this first inning is going to be. Wow, and this Arizona lineup has just been ice cold, and it's going to be on Jesse Harper to break them out. The senior out of Stevenson's Ranch, California. The 1-1 winds and fires the pitch. A little tall, two and one to Harper. So you see her step out there. She is a big believer in talking to herself at the plate. Only positive thoughts for Harper. Two and one. Swing and a miss. She's got to search for something positive to say after that pitch. It's two and two. Yep. But, but, but she's all about that confident, relaxed approach. It's definitely worked for her throughout her collegiate career. Two-two, bases empty, two gone in the top of the first. 
and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Diaz strikes the side out. Two swinging, one looking. Arizona down in order. Diaz picks up three Ks to start it off. Bottom one after this quick break in this scoreless ball game right here on KWVA. Welcome back to Jane Sanders Stadium. Oregon and Arizona deadlocked at zero here in the bottom of the first inning. Now Oregon coming up with Cruz, Bunker, and McGowan. And Haley Cruz has caught fire here on her senior weekend. Four for her last four. And in game one of the doubleheader, Michael had a single in the first, a triple in the third, and the game-winning RBI double in the fifth inning. Yeah, Jordan, the biggest advice from all the graduated seniors of this Oregon softball program is just take it in, soak it in, make every plate appearance count. Haley Cruz is absolutely doing that. Hannah Bowen's first pitch is high. And Bowen was uh, on the wrong end of yesterday's game. We'll put it that way. Took a perfect game into the seventh. Haley Cruz broke that up with a single to right. And then she gave up the walk-off two-run homer. 1-0 to Cruz. Cruz swings, pops it back behind home. That's and it's 1-1. So tough to do that to Anna Bowen. I mean, she had one of her greatest games of the year, honestly. She gave one of up, the, Yeah, one of the best of her career. Yeah, she gave up a single and a homer. They just happened to be back-to-back -back in the seventh inning after six perfect innings. One ball, one strike. Bowen to Cruz. She misses outside, and it's 2-1. and one. So after the top three of Cruz, Bunker, Miguel, and the Ducks bring up Delgado, Alyssa Brito, and Rachel Sid. Jay Bowden, seventh. Deja Pink Lenin hit a double in game one. She's eighth. And Valerie Wong catching and hitting ninth. 2-1 to Cruz. Turns on one. See ya. Way back left field. It's at the wall, and it's gone. Haley Cruz. A single, a double, a triple, a homer. In her last four at-bats, the Ducks take a 1-0 lead. Cruz has hit her seventh home run of the season. That's a career high. Jordan, I don't care what anyone says. Haley Cruz just hit for the cycle. <laughs> she only got three at-bats last game. She had the single, double, and triple. And how many times are we going to see a Haley Cruz home run to lead off a game? That is her favorite spot to do those home runs. Whether Leading off an inning, she's pretty great at that too, but leading off games with home runs is like the Haley Cruz special. Bunker showing Bunt takes a strike, pulls it back, and that is a curtain call worthy moment for Haley Cruz. Has a cycle in her last four at-bats. She has hits in five consecutive at-bats. The 0-1 to Bunker, a screamer, a liner into right. Basket catch made. Out there in right field, Hannah Martinez charging in to make the catch. And Bunker is still over in this series, but hit that one real hard. Yeah. The wind today, not giving batters a lot of help. A little bit blowing out into the outfield, but it's been dead most of the time, and that's why we haven't seen too many balls leave the yard, not too much offense, but Haley Cruz earned it. McGowan swing and a miss, nothing in one. So Hannah Bowen has had a tough time with Haley Cruz this series. Now her ERA is at 156 in 67 in the third innings. 55 Ks, 11 walks, and she is 7 and 2. 0-1, McGowan swinging through an off-speed pitch. Nothing in two. But the count certainly not done for McGowan. She took Bowen deep on an 0-2 pitch to win game one. Bowen staring in. Here's the 0-2 hurl. A little bit low, a great eye by McGowan. We talk about Maya Felder and Haley Cruz as the two with the best eye on the team. I'm putting Tara McGowan in that elite group one so disciplined the one two looks at another tough pitch low and it's two and two so mcgowan's hitting 319 for fifth home run last night and 25 runs batted in and a 2-2 count battling back against bowen the pitch swing she lunges after her, way up high and foul territory right side scooping the call, the catch in the coach's box. Two away. 
Yeah, Jordan and Hannah Bowen, she's lost her uh, perfect game bid pretty early in this one on the Haley Cruz homer, but she's a really exciting pitcher to watch. You talked about when she came up to bat actually last game out of that five foot four frame, not exactly a power pitcher, but she still gets pretty up there in velocity and just has perfect placement. Delgado with a swing and a liner. Martinez, a thief to take that away. It was destined for left, but caught it with the edge of her mitt and puts the Ducks down in the first inning. Well, they call it a Tiger Slam. Tiger won four majors in a row in two different years. Uh, we'll call it the cruise cycle here in the first inning. The Ducks get a run on the cruise homer. A hit, no errors, nobody left. The Ducks won, the Wildcats nothing. Right here on KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Top of the second inning, Oregon with another lead over Arizona, one to nothing. It'll be Muli Pola, Palacios Martinez. 4-5-6 for the Wildcats against Samaria Diaz. Diaz struck out the side of the first inning. Has her sign from Wong. Twisting. Has the sign. Now offers. Down the middle. That's a strike. Nothing and one. Last game I talked about how great Muli Pola is at getting on base. Coming into today, 29 out of 42 games. She, was got, she didn't just get on base. She got on base twice. This is the first time this season that she's had a three-game streak of not getting on base twice. And the 0-1. Swing and a pop-up foul left side. She did have that loud single in the fourth inning against Giannis. Oh, yeah, no doubt she's still. And, again, she in the last three games, she's still gotten on base one time out yeah. of three plate appearances. She's doing just fine. But for the best hitter in the conference this is her version of a slump is the fact that the last three games she hasn't had one of those big games where she's gotten on more than once oh and two to the team usa olympian muli pola watches one miss outside she's getting the day off at least the game off from catching so you can do when you have charlie's palacios able to just step in and do a do a really fine job one of the best defensive catchers, I'd say, ever. And it's low. Two and two now, at least at the collegiate level. Yeah, she's so good that nobody even bothers trying to steal against her. Right? Yeah, that's a thing. All of the stolen bases against Arizona are more likely on Palacios in the games that she's been catching. Two balls, two strikes to Muli Pula. Diaz deals. Grounded pass, Sid. A dive, but she couldn't get there. Right to left, right at Delgado. Willie Pola has a hit here in game two and her second hit of the day. Yeah, just another day at the office for Willie Pola. Another well-hit single. Her and Maddie Hackbarth both. Maddie Hackbarth, obviously, Arizona State. Those two players from Arizona. You just can't stop it. They're going to get on base. To the righty, Palacios catching in this ball game. Sean Bunt puts it down beautifully. Diaz, the only play to first. Sacrifice of success. And Muli Pola goes to second. She runs well, so a single should score her. Here's Malia Martinez, the third baseman for UA. 16, 10 homers, 34 batted in. But Martinez has had a tough go this series, Michael. 0 for 3 in game 1 today. 0 for 2 in the first game of the series. Pop behind him, it's going to go off the net. So it's ruled a foul ball, and it's 1 and 0 and 1. Martinez, a redshirt senior out of Poe, California. Second team all Pac-12 back in 2019, a 339 average that season. 0-1, swing and right on it, but back to the screen. Another foul ball, nothing in two. So runner in scoring position for Arizona. They only have one run this series. So you can bet they know how important Mulu Pola on second is. The 0-2 to Martinez. Pitch in, swing and a miss. The fourth K for Samaria Diaz. And Martinez chases a pitch in the left-handed hitter's batter's box. 
That was a ball, Michael. Yeah, Jordan. This, I mean, going back to last game, this is like the 15th time that we've seen an Arizona Wildcats strike out. So many swings and misses. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, the center fielder. First pitch, a little tall. And it's 1-0. 69 from Diaz. It is senior weekend for Samaria Diaz. Hails from West Covina, California. What a journey it's been for her and her collegiate career. The 1-0. Palomino Cardoza takes a strike. 1-1. Of course, started her career at New Mexico State. Didn't just pitch well there. Was truly a pitcher that West that conference hitters, I'm pretty sure it's the WCC, the 1-1, one, one. Palomino Cordoza misses it. Swing and a miss, one and two. Yeah, Jordan, I just did the math. The Wildcats have sent 31 hitters to the plate in this today, going back to the last game in this one. 16 of them have struck out. One ball, two strikes. Palomino Cardoza can't get it. Up the ladder for the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Samaria Diaz. No runs on one hit, no errors. Diaz strands a runner, five Ks through two. Middle two here on KWVA with the Ducks up one nothing, which means we check in with Adam Sussman. He's our producer today. Adam with a sports desk update. Okay. Thank you very much. Adam, bottom two, the Ducks leading off with Alyssa Brito. The first pitch coming in low. Want to know, still Hannah Bowen in the circle. Brito, it's a 1-0 count. We saw her, I think, take some steps towards breaking that 0 for, which now stands at 0 for 20. In her last at-bat of game one, 1-0. Brito gonna take a pitch, a tough one. Call the strike, 1-1. One one. Mike, what'd you see in that at-bat? I saw her fight off some tough pitches and at least square it up in foul territory. That's got to be a step. Yeah, we're seeing her battle. Um, she's definitely, every time you're going to go over 20, there's going to be some bad breaks mixed in there as well. 1-1, one, one, swinging a drive to deep center, back to the track. Turning around, Palomino Cardoza has it. A long fly out to deep center field for Brito. Yeah, she squared that one up. I mean, compared to uh, strikeouts, those are the kind of at-bats that you're okay with. You want to see her get that hard contact. And one thing to note also is the faith that Melissa Lombardi has shown in her shortstop. I mean, in a streak like this, she's now 0 for 21. Most of the time, as a coach, you, you, move, you pull someone out of the lineup. You put somebody else in there, but Lombardi's riding with Brito. Sid turning on the first pitch up in the air to shallow left. Under it is Mionio. Puts it away. Two gone. Couple flyouts here. We didn't see Bowen miss up in the zone too much yesterday, did we, Michael? I think those are a couple pitches where, yeah, Oregon couldn't square it up. She's an awesome pitcher with nasty stuff, but by her standards, and I think yesterday they were perfect standards. Yeah. Those are those were two misses on back-to-back -back pitches. Next up is Shea Bowden for her first at bat. Here in the second, the Ducks leading one to nothing. Pitch going away. Bowden is. Hitting 250, three homers, 10 runs batted in this season. And Bowden had a chopping single her first time up in the second in game one. First hit of the series. The 1 0 to Bowden, she's going to step out. Oh, she's got to get something out of her eye. How frustrating must it be, Jordan? You're not just losing games 4 0, 5 0, to lose a game 1 0, <laughs> to know that you spoiled a really great performance by your pitcher. 1 0, Bowden. Pokes it foul, one-on-one, -on -one, poked it to the right side. Yeah, and Jordan, if, if we came into this series and I told you game one, Oregon's only going to score two runs. Game two, Oregon's only going to score one run. <laughs> Hard to believe that they'd be sitting at 2-0. and oh. One ball, one strike, two, batting, and the pitch. Coming in, missing inside. Two balls, one strike. Well, I'd be packing my bags because Oregon and I would – Probably be getting ready to travel for a regional already. Yeah. It's a good chance Oregon hosts, especially if they can win one of the next two. 2-1, two, two Bowden. Waits for it, and then off speed pitch is grounded foul to the left side, 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, and it's really nice for the Ducks to have California next on the schedule. 
a team that has been scuffling, sort of has had issues with even getting to out there on the field to play games. Yeah. A lot of cancellations. and Definitely with this Pac-12 gauntlet, it means a lot to have California at the end of it. 2-2 two -two to Shea Bowden. Reaches after one to stay alive. Pokes a foul again. And it's still the Pac-12, Jordan. You gotta earn all those wins. You gotta play hard, but yeah. if they're able to convert success this weekend and roll into next weekend with even more success, then Oregon's no doubt sitting in the top 12 at least and probably top 10 in the country. 2-2 two -two pitch. Bowden fouls another one off off the end of the bat. Little chopper off the plate that goes to the left side. And the important thing to note is if you end up being chosen by the committee as one of the top eight teams in the country, you're hosting not just your regional, but your super regional. So the entire road to the College World Series could run through Jane Sanders. 2-2, two -two, swing and a high drive, shallow left field. Mionio has another. Three flyouts in the second for the Ducks. Bowen sets the Ducks down in order. No trouble in this one. Uh, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Cruz's homer, still the difference. one nothing Oregon. We move on to the third. Right here, on your voice of Oregon softball, it's KWVA. Seniors carrying the load for Oregon in game three of four at the Jane. one nothing. The Ducks over the Wildcats. Cruz with the homer. Samaria Diaz dealing in the circle. And for play-by-play -play the third and fourth, here's my broadcasting partner, Michael Strike. That's right. The Ducks have normally, in the first two games of the series, had to wait until pretty late in the game before they were able to get on the board, but they didn't wait at all in this one with a Haley Cruz special, a leadoff home run. Not the first time she started a game knocking one out of the park, and that's why the Ducks are up 1-0. Carly Scoopin steps in for the top of the third, the eighth hitter in the Wildcats lineup for this one. The pitch from Diaz, low for ball one, and we saw 12 strikeouts from Brooke Yanez in the last one. We're looking at five strikeouts in the first seven batters faced for Samaria Diaz in this one. The struggles for Arizona have just been hard to miss. Here's the 1-0. Swung and fouled for strike number one. The Wildcats in today have sent up 33 batters to the plate. 17 of them have struck out and only 16 of them have actually been able to put the ball in play you're not going to get anything done with an over 50% strikeout rate. And, you know, you think maybe it's just Brooke Yanez being unhittable, being dominant. But here's Samaria Diaz doing the same thing. And the 1-1 from Diaz. Fouled again to the left side. So scooping a little bit behind on those pitches, but she's, she's getting caught up to it. She's feeling good. And the thing about strikeouts, Michael, when there are so many, the defense can tend to get off of their toes, right? They start relaxing, not a lot of action. That has not been the case. It's been pitching combined with awesome Oregon defense, defense today. Yep. Scooping this one down the left field line. Just a foot foul. Probably even less than a foot. Would have been a great opportunity for a single or double for Scoopin, who really struggled against the lefty Yanez. Got pinch hit for in the seventh inning of the last game. And is excited to be facing a righty. I mean, you talked about just the way that it jumped out of Yanez's hand. From the left side of the box, it's brutal. And we're talking about the shadows right now, Jane Sanders. This is always kind of a factor as the sun changes its position. Standing in the shadows is scooping. Here's the one-two. Check, swing, fouled back. It's going to be another one-two count on 68 from Yanez. So she's standing in the sun. The shadows have creeped up over the plate in the batter's box. So as if you, as if it wasn't hard enough for Arizona to, to make contact with pitches already, I think this works against them. And here's Diaz. One, two. High. It's going to be two and two. Freshman first baseman scoop in made an error at first in the last one, but the defense for both teams has been stellar. It's what you would expect. Both these squads pride themselves on pretty good defense. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled, and it bounces away. And that's what I figured. It bounced off of Scoopin in the batter's box, so it's just going to be a foul ball. She started running to first. The play continued just to be sure, but 
Scoopin basically fouls it off of her body and she'll stay in the box. Love this approach to Scoopin who really hovers over the plate, thinks the opposite field really every time. So Diaz has gone in to her real close to the body twice now and has wow. forced her to get off the plate a little bit. Here's the 2-2. We've already seen three foul balls. High and great at bat from Scoopin to work it to a full count. Yeah, that one got away from Diaz. That one went all the way to the screen. And right, a good fight by Scoopin here. Yeah, Scoopin leading off this bottom of the third inning, trying to set the table for the top of the order. Scoopin just the eight hitter here. She's battled her way into a full count. Here it comes. Fouled back, another foul ball. And wow, I mean, Jordan, we just talked about what a bright future the freshman Scoopin has ahead of her. She's already so comfortable, so professional in the batter's box. The fact that the only real concern for her right now is her defense at first base has been shaky at times, but for somebody in their freshman year to already have the hitting put together the way she has is so impressive. And another full count pitch, quite the long at bats. Low for ball four, Scoopin earns herself a walk. The first walk of the day for the Wildcats Yana has had one hit by pitch in the last one, but didn't allow any walks, and Scoopin is aboard. Yeah, great at bat by Scoopin, and that's something that her teammates will take notice of in the dugout. Scoopin is still a freshman, and, you know, she's taken some walks this year, but to foul off some pitches, be willing to pass the bat for an offense that's scuffling, she, yeah, there you see, she's, get, she's getting high fives all around for that AB as Arizona brings in a pinch runner. And I believe, Michael, it's going to be, I actually can't see the number. Can you see? It's 55, 55 yeah. Julia Kutsianopoulos. Yeah, she's got a great name. So she comes in to pinch run, and at the plate is Hannah Martinez. Hannah Martinez batting out of the ninth spot, the only run that the Wildcats have scored in this whole series so far was the Hannah Martinez solo home run. She shows bunt, pulls back, ball one. Outside of a Hannah Martinez solo home run, you're looking at 20 innings, zero runs allowed by this Ducks pitching staff and a late timeout. Melissa Lombardi will head out to the circle, have a quick shot with some Mario Diaz, especially after that first pitch ball, the walk that you just saw. I think Lombardi, I mean, she's a pitcher's coach, right? She sees these mechanical things that she's not going to wait to correct them. If she sees something that Samaria Diaz can do, uh, maybe there's going to be some conversation as well about the defense with a pinch runner on first, but she's going to go in there and uh, you know say what she thinks Diaz can can adjust. Yeah, especially with one, two, three coming up, Mionio, Caranco, and Harper. The next three after Martina, so very important out to get. You don't want traffic on the base paths with uh, with those hitters coming up. That's for sure. Yeah, Jordan. There's no doubt this top of the Arizona lineup is going to have multiple all Pac-12 selections, some All-American nods as well. But what this Arizona lineup traditionally in the games where they have scored big, big, you know, runs, it's been the bottom of the order. Scoopin, Martinez, they've been so tough to get out as well that they set the table. They get on base ahead of those big hitters at the top. So, we're going to have a 1-0 count after the break. A runner on first. The pitch bunted. And a quick fire to second for Sid. What a play. We saw it again. Rachel Sid with the strike to second to get the out on the bunt attempt. She's not having it today, Michael. These sacrifices for Arizona. These are fine bunts, right? And Rachel Sid for the second time now. No hesitation. Guns it to bunker covering at second. The sacrifice unsuccessful and so big with Mionio, Caranco, and Harper of the next three up. Yeah, and you can't have any hesitation. You can't think about what you're doing. You just have to field and fire. First pitch into Mionio. It's going to be a ball. And what Sid both times is just no hesitation, picks it up, launches to second, gets the out. She's decided she's just going to claim that entire left side of the infield as her territory. They've tried to bunt twice now, and she said, no, not in my house. So here's the 1-0 to Mionio. Grounded up the middle, and it's going to be a base hit for Mionio, one of the most prolific hitters in the conference right now in just her freshman year. She had a single last game. She just got a single in this one, and she's doing exactly what Arizona's offense likes to do. A couple, a walk, and a single, 
setting things up for the heart of the order, Reina Caranco. Well, nobody defends. You, you, let me put it another way. you got to defend Mionio in such a unique way. The infield and outfield both in, so if she hits it on the ground, it's going to get by your infielder. It's really special. So two runners on for Caranco. First pitch foul, strike one. And we saw five strikeouts in the first two innings for Samaria Diaz cruising. The strikeout rate for Arizona has fallen below 50% on the day, so they're turning things around, but they've still got to get these runners home. The 0-1, outside, ball one. Clay Thermos is getting action in the Oregon bullpen. Man, how bad does Arizona need a big hit right now, Michael? Yep, the good news is they have players that they want coming up. Muli Pola, not Muli Pola, Jesse Harper in the on-deck circle. The pitch, the 1-1, one, one, high, ball two. And Samaria Diaz, you don't want to fall behind in counts like this. This is one of those situations where you are just a few mistake pitches away from giving up a devastating inning to this Arizona Wildcats squad. Wind blowing softly out from left to right now. The 2-1 to Caranco, low, ball three. It's been a tight zone for Megan Rabin, and she's going to hear... A sea of boos from this Oregon crowd. An important pitch. The difference between 2-2 and 3-1. Yeah, one thing to note about Yanez's 12 strikeout performance, she didn't get a lot of help from the home plate umpire in that one either. She earned all 12 of them. Samaria Diaz, the 3-1, right on the corner again. This time she does get that called strike. So the Gene Sanders crowd, maybe they'll think that their uh, sea of boos, like you said, will sort of sway the umpire Megan Rabin a little bit. But... You know, that, that's what they'll think. Here's the full count. One out. Diaz to Caranco. Pretty big pitch here in the top of the third. And she fires. Strike three called. Diaz with a nod to her catcher Wong. Strikeout number six on the day. Well, I think Caranco is thinking off speed there, and I think that's why Wong got that nod because it was a great call with the heater. And it, was, it wasn't like it was outside or... It was pretty much right down the middle, maybe slightly to the outer part of the plate, and Caranco was fooled, and she goes down looking for the second time today as Diaz picks up her sixth K. That's going to be high. First pitch to Jesse Harper, sets it up 1-0. And Jordan, you just talk about how badly Arizona needs to get a hit <laughs> right now. I mean, runners on. This is your moment. Jesse Harper, your three hitter. Last game, Muli Polo was batting third and Harper was fourth. They've been switched for this one. Harper's been moved up to the three spot. See if it pays off for Arizona. The 1 0, called strike, right down the pipe at 67. So we're going to have a 1 1 count for Jesse Harper, who struck out in her first time up. Like we said, she's big on those positive thoughts, a lot of positive self talk. That'll do, do you good in the batter's box and in life. It's pretty good. Words of wisdom in general just all across the board. See if she can talk her way into an RBI here. The 1-1. Swung on and missed. Great pitch by Diaz. And Diaz with another little quick finger point to her catcher Valerie Wong. Wong and Lombardi in tandem there. They're very pleased with the way they're calling this one so far. And you can hear the crowd starting to rumble on the verge of what could be strikeout number seven for Diaz. The 1-2 pitch. Here it is. This one. Popped up, settling under at his bunker, very high, but she makes the grab. And two runners stranded for the Arizona Wildcats. No runs, one hit, one walk, no errors. And like we said, two runners left on. The Ducks still lead 1-0. And on the other side of this break, Deja Pangolin and Valerie Wong, and then Haley Cruz back up again after four straight hits. So stay tuned. You're listening to KWVA, Eugene, 88.1 FM. Thank you, Mark Grandy, former sports director. And we're here in the bottom of the third, Deja Pangolinen. We talk about Oregon searching for that last hitter in the lineup or that third outfielder to pair with Haley Cruz and Hannah Delgado, who both have been pretty great this season. Deja Pangolinen, another great game for her, and she may have earned that starting spot in center field. She had a double in the last one. She only went one for two. She only got two plate appearances, but she had the double that set the table for Haley Cruz to hit a double. She ended up being the only run scored for either side in the last one. 
And she's going to step up to the plate again to lead off things. We've got a little bit of a delay. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we're waiting on the TV broadcast. Yeah, that, that seems to be the case. Well, the thing with Deja Pangolina is you know you're getting great defense. I think Oregon's best defensive lineup this season is consistently included Pangolina. There are even moments where she doesn't play the first five innings. And then in a close game, they'll put her in center to close out with your best defensive lineup. So if she can swing the bat with that defense, then I think you're right. She's the obvious choice for that third outfielder spot. Yeah, and we're still waiting to get this inning underway. A bit mysterious. Everyone's yeah, I just think standing that, around. There's a head coach's interview with Coach Candrea out there in the Oregon, or, oh, yeah. yeah, the Arizona dugout. He's got a mic on, oh, and yeah. now he takes it off. Oh, my goodness. Looks like we're going to be able to get things underway then. So, like you said about Pangolina, a pretty good defensive center fielder, and one of the values she provides is for Haley Cruz. Haley Cruz kind of bounces back and forth between center field and right field. She's also a pretty great fielder, and she can use that even more to her advantage playing out in right field here in Jane Sanders. First pitch popped up by Pangolin and high, way above the wing, called off by Scoopin. Scoopin with the pop out in fall foul territory. So first pitch out there for Pangolin. But Haley Cruz has a cannon of an arm, and it really serves her well out in right field. So not only do you get Pangolin's services in center, but you get to use Haley Cruz and have her be an even better right fielder than she would be as a center fielder. So uh, it definitely upgrades for the defense all around, and Melissa Lombardi is going to be very pleased if Pangolinen can start hitting, uh, as we've seen. She's one for three today. But anyways, Pangolinen's out. Here comes Valerie Wong up to the plate. First pitch at the knees for a strike. Valerie Wong doing the catching duties today. Like we said, Tara McGowan, the normal catcher, playing DP in this one. She's still in the lineup, but obviously you don't want to give her two back-to-back -back games in the squat. Here's Wong, the 0 one outside ball one. Back to playing Cruz in right field. Think about it this way, Michael. Oregon has so many power pitchers. You're facing a lineup with righties. Those righties often hit a two right field, so you may even want your best fielder in right, which is why Cruz plays there a lot. Yeah, the 1-1 one -one to Wong, fouled back into the net. Strike two, and Valerie Wong has been really useful. I mean, we talked about how Shea Bowden was uh, a catcher for Oregon in 2019. She's since sort of moved to being a first baseman in DP. Valerie Wong has taken the, the official spot as the backup catcher here. The one, two, grounded softly to scoop in at first. She's gonna field it, call off the second baseman, and jog over to first. So both the outs have been in Scoopin's glove in this one, and that's two down. All right, Michael, here we go. Here we go. Here comes Cruz, and what else does she have in store? Oh, Let's yeah. cycle her last four ABs. Jordan, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it, but I think what we're, what we need now is a bunt single. <laughs> We've seen her do this before. She's got the power to hit it over the fence, but also the power to just lay one down for an easy free single. And here's the first pitch. It's just going to be a called strike. But yeah, that's the magic of Haley Cruz. Is she literally covers every inch of grass that there is here in Jane Sanders. She has power. She has extra base, you know, ability to all corners of this park, and she has the ability to just beat out infield hits and lay down bunts too, right from that leadoff spot. The 0-1. This one popped up, right up the middle, over is Harper to make the grab. So, a one-two-three inning for the Ducks. Nothing doing for them. That's three innings in the books. Oregon still leads 1-0. On the other side, Samaria Diaz gets back to work. Deja Mulipola will bat for the Wildcats, so stay tuned. We've got another pitcher's duel in this one. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back, and that's it for Samaria Diaz. So far, she ends up going three innings, and it's a new pitcher for the Ducks. McKenna Clethermus will enter this one as she's warming up right now. Jordan, what do you think? Well, I like this decision because I think mechanically Thermos excels out of the bullpen. I think Samaria Diaz, if, if you asked me before the game, if you can get three good innings out of her, I would have said you take that ten times out of ten. So that's what Oregon does. They take those three innings. And now, as the middle of the order gets their second look, or would have gotten their second look, now they have to figure out Clee Thermos for the first time in this series. Yeah, and that's one thing we found is just how difficult Clee Thermos is to figure out out of the blend. Here is Mulipola. First pitch high, and Jordan, or no, not high, called strike, my bad. Here's Mulipola's line. I feel like I just have to say it once. 
409 average, 545 on base, 891 <laughs> slugging percentage. Is that any good? Yeah, that's pretty good. And outside for ball one, I mean, if your OPS is over 1,000, you're doing great. And Molly Pola's OVS, OPS is like 1,300. I mean, she's just blowing it out of the water. And she hasn't had a bad series herself. She started off with a single. And this one, she is the one of the two hits that the Wildcats have in this one. The 1-1 one swung on, strike two, 68, and a 1-2 count. It's a bit tough. Clee Thermos just throws so hard. It, it, it is an adjustment after you've seen the pitches of Samaria Diaz. And Clee Thermos has just a little bit of that jump. I mean, she's at 68, 69, but even then it's got a little bit of movement to it too. Here's the 1-2, swung on and missed. There it is. Strikeout number one for Clee Thermos. Strikes out one of the best hitters in the conference. That's one way to start out your day. It's also the big frame, right? She is an intimidating figure in the circle. And I think one of the reasons it jumps, one of the reasons it jumps at hitters is because it's starting from a higher point than other pitchers you'll see. Yeah, so here comes Charlize Palacios with one out. Pitch high, 1-0. Yeah, that's true for everyone that Oregon has, and they've got a pretty incredible staff to choose from. I think Klee Thermos just has the biggest intimidation factor in terms of just scaring those hitters. The 1-0 pitch is going to be a called strike at the knees. Well, if you ask left-handed hitters, I think they disagree. I think yeah. Brooke Giannis is pretty scary. But, uh, yeah, mechanically thermos. I, she's got that closer mantra. Oh, I, sure. I think Breedlove has it too. Yeah, and here's the 1-1. This is going to be outside. Yeah, and another note about Samaria Diaz, whose line is going to be two hits allowed, one walk. Six strikeouts in three innings, no earned runs. Pretty great performance for her. She's kind of found to hit her wall at about three, four-ish innings into a game. She's not the type of pitcher that can stretch seven innings together very often. The 2-1, swung on and missed strike two. So what you've seen, Melissa Lombardi kind of getting ahead of it. Just saying, you know what? We got three from Diaz. That was amazing. I'm good. And passing the ball to Clee Thermos, who has been especially great out of the bullpen like we said she has that closer mentality where she loves to just come in out of the pen and say that's it this game's closed out swung on and missed another k the ball gets away from wong so she has to make the tag but she does back to back strikeouts for Klee thermos to start this one. i mean just nasty to this upstairs and Klee thermos hasn't even had to go to the off speed yet ball's jumping out of her right hand today yeah and Arizona, you, they thought maybe in this one that they'd get a break from Yanez. Things would pick up a little bit. That has not been the case. First pitch to Malia Martinez, high ball one. It's been Yanez, it's been Diaz, and now it's Klee Thermos. All of these Oregon pitchers have been unhittable, and you're just seeing swing and miss, swing and miss, one after another. Here's the 1-0, swung on and missed. <laughs> I mean, it's like clockwork. I mean, this poor Arizona lineup is just – not able to make contact, and we talked about the shadows. The way the shadows set up right now it just makes it all the more difficult. So, right-handed here, the one-one from Malia Martinez, right on the outside, a little bit outside though. So, ball two. We talk about that mindset in the circle, the intensity that these pitchers have. Oregon's so unique; they have four different pitchers with at least two saves this year. Yeah. Malia Martinez, strike two. She's on the verge of striking out the side here. Yeah, this Oregon staff, I mean, we know Yanez is the, the game one pitcher most of the time. She's the ace. But after that, there's really not a lot of predictability about what Melissa Lombardi's going to do. They're all comfortable starting, relieving. You're seeing it all. The 2-2, two -two, fouled back into the net. And especially now that Reagan Breedlove is getting to see some action in Pac-12 play, She's just a freshman, so, you know, you expect to see her not get used as much, you know, against these scary Pac-12 lineups, but we saw her used quite a bit more and pretty successfully in the Arizona State Series. So she's also in the mix, too, along with Klee Thermos and Diaz. Here's the 2-2. Two, -two, two outs. Inside, ball three. Yeah, almost hit her. Yeah. So it's going to be a full count. Klee Thermos one pitch away from striking out the side here in the top of the fourth. The Ducks lead 1-0. After a Haley Cruz home run, they won the last game 1-0 thanks to a Haley Cruz RBI double. Trying to repeat that. Full count. Fouled again. And a good battle for Malia Martinez. 
only team in the conference, Michael, to have four pitchers with multiple saves. Wow. Yeah, and that is that is the case when you have Reagan Breedlove stepping up the way she has. The full count from Clee Thermos. Oh, that's going to be ball four quite a bit outside. So she gives the free pass to Malia Martinez. That's the first time today that Martinez is able to get on base. She started off this one 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Yeah, just lost her there. Pitch got away from her. Yeah, Martinez earned that walk though. Definitely battled, yeah. fouled it off. So here's Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, the center fielder for the Wildcats. Now with a runner on first. High, ball one. And you know Clee Thermos' mindset right now is to try and just take this and run with it and be the closer to finish this game out, to not need any help. It looks like Jordan Dale in the bullpen right now, actually. The 1-0 to Palomino. Fouled into the net. Strike one. And not a lot of off speed from Clee Thermos. She's got confidence in that fastball. And she should, like you said, the high release point with her tall frame. That top speed that she has of 68, 69 sometimes, it's doing quite well for her, so she hasn't had to use that off speed very much. Here's the 1-1, one, one. 68, right down the middle, strike two. And another opportunity for Clee Thermos to get her third strike out of the day. The 1-2 pitch, oh, we've got a time called by the umpire. Megan Rabin, just gonna pause things a little bit. And now we're gonna lock in. The one-two pitch, two outs here in the top of the fourth. Called strike three. The third for Clee Thermos. And what a weekend for Oregon pitchers. It continues. The Ducks get three strikeouts there no runs no hits one walk no errors and a runner left on first and they still lead one to zero as we head to the bottom of the fourth with the heart of the oregon lineup coming up stay tuned you're listening to kwva eugene 88.1 fm welcome back we're jumping right in hannah bowen in the circle ali bunker leading things off for the ducks first pitch foul down the right field line into the arizona dugout for strike one ali bunker in a bit of a slump, she has not had, she hasn't gotten on base, I think, or for sure has not gotten a hit in this series so far. So hidden right behind Haley Cruz, who's been sensational, has been a little bit of a slump for Allie Bunker. She's sitting on nine home runs on this season. So the next one will be number 10 for her. And here's the 0-1 pitch from Bowen. That's gonna be off speed and just sliding outside for ball one. Yeah, it's been a little bit of an extended slump, too. Nine for her last 49 for Bunker. She's all right against Arizona State. Four hits in 14 tries. Had that big Friday game against the Sun Devils. Yeah, this one fouled. And it's going to be strike two. Allie Bunker, somebody that's tough to strike out. She only has seven walks and five strikeouts on the entire season. And she's pretty much played the whole season. She's over 150 plate appearances, so... She's just somebody, she's one of the few players in the entire conference that puts the ball in play over 90% of the time. This one, outside, check swing, doesn't offer, nearly had a strike out there, but like, like we said, the incredible discipline of Bunker gets her into a 2-2 count here. So I, I believe coming into this weekend, it was only her and one other player from Stanford that had their strikeouts and walks under 10% of the time. This one lined up the middle into the outfield and a base hit for Allie Bunker. That's such a professional at bat by Allie Bunker. Just kind of flung out that bat with one hand. It was a pitch away and she found the hole in the infield with a line drive reaching base hit for Bunker who finally, despite hitting the ball hard a couple of times this series, Gets her first hit against Arizona in 2021. Yep, and here's Tara McGowan for the run around first. First pitch going to be a little outside for ball one. Tara McGowan, obviously yesterday, one of the most important swings of the entire Oregon season. 
turned things on its head, broke up what would have been a complete game shutout for Hannah Bowen. Again, right same pitch for Bowen, but this time it's called a strike. So 1-1, one, one. Hannah Bowen really exceptional at just pounding that outside part of the plate, getting right into that corner of the plate. She's just been terrific, and that's what's been working for her is just putting that pitch exactly where she wants it. That one, again, right on the outside line. This one's called the ball, but Hannah Bowen's unfazed by that. I mean, she's just going to keep finding her spots, and for the most part, it works. Shows the trust Melissa Lombardi has in McGowan right now with how she's playing that she has not asked her to lay down a bunt yet. This is That's usually true. an obvious sacrifice situation. Here's the 2-1. This one out to right field, coming in on it, and that's caught by the right fielder, Hannah Martinez, for out number one. You're right, Jordan. That was a, a sack bunt potential situation. Arizona turns more double plays than any other team in the conference, so they're looking forward to a double play. Here, Hannah Delgado, the freshman, steps up into the plate. She's batting 344. With a runner still on first, that's Allie Bunker. And the first pitch from Bowen. Right down the middle, strike one. Hannah Bowen is still only allowed four hits in 11 innings of work. Two of them just happened to be home runs for all three of her runs. This one high. It's going to be ball one. So, yeah, you'd think 11 innings, four hits allowed. You're doing pretty great, and she has been doing pretty great. Just happened to be that two of them were over the fence, and they've both been pretty consequential. A walk-off homer for Tara McGowan yesterday, and the only run of the game so far today from Haley Cruz. This one a little low for ball two. It's been a little bit different for Bowen, and I've been impressed with her because this isn't her A-plus stuff. We saw that last night. Yesterday, she was ahead in literally every at-bat. When she missed, it was by an inch or two. Today, she's had to battle a little bit more, and she's still had a lot of success. Here's the 2-1. This one fouled out over. And we talk about, oh, you can hear the crowd. A little bit of a groan is that could have been caught by the fan, but instead bounced off his hands. He still has the ball. He's going to... I think have to return that one, but almost made the grab. Here's Hannah Delgado with a 2-2 count. And we talk about how this Wildcats team has hopes of a trip to the Women's College World Series. And right now the big concern is their lineup producing on the road in big games since that's been a huge issue, the 2-2 pitch outside for ball three. But another thing to highlight is that I think in the 1-2 punch of Hannah Bowen and Alyssa Denham, they certainly have pitchers that are capable of delivering them a trip to the Women's College World Series. You know, they've got pitchers that compete among the best in the country. And we've seen that this weekend. Hannah Bowen pitches in, and this one high out to left field, chasing in to grab it, and that's going to be out number two, caught by the left fielder, Mionio. So two flyouts, and Ali Bunker is still at first. Yeah, yesterday it was Bone keeping it on the ground. Today she's attacked Oregon up in the zone a little bit. And Oregon, except for Haley Cruz, hasn't squared it up even one time. They have had trouble catching up to the heat from Bowen. She's only 5'4". It's a small frame, but boy, does it jump out of her right hand. Yeah, here's Alyssa Brito. This one inside. So like we said, Alyssa Brito no matter what, through the hot streaks, through the cold streaks, has been Oregon's shortstop this season. Interesting thing to note is potential return next season of Jasmine Seavers, who Oregon fans got used to as their shortstop. The 1-0 fouled back into the net for strike one. So that's definitely something to address next year. You're not really thinking about it this year, but Jasmine Seavers could return to the Diamond for Oregon softball. So we'll see how that shakes out. Truth this year, though, Alyssa Brito's been their shortstop. She's been in the lineup pretty consistently. I don't even imagine who else would be playing shortstop if it wasn't her. Strike two swinging on Brito sets up a one-two count. Well, and Brito was taken out last week against Arizona State just to get her a breather in the midst of her slump. You know who was playing shortstop? They put Valerie Wong wow. at shortstop. Oh, yeah. Talk about flexibility. Catch her to shortstop. Yeah. Here's the one-two pitch to Brito. And that's the definition. That one's fouled into the backstop for still one and two count. But that's the definition of utility, Jordan. <laughs> I mean, utility normally just means, well, you get to play shortstop, second base. But how about 
catcher to shortstop and just saying, you send me out there wherever, coach. I know what to do. That's what you want out of your uh, one of your players on the bench in Valerie Wong, who, like we said, is catching today for the Ducks. The one-two. Foul tip into the glove. Strike three swinging for Alyssa Brito. And another strikeout in a slump that seems to be never-ending for Alyssa Brito, unfortunately. And that's it for the fourth inning. The Ducks still lead 1-0. Scoopin, Martinez, and Mionio up to bat in the top of the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on first. You're listening to KWVA, Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back. Games have been flying by, and that's because the pitchers on both sides have been unhittable outside of some a few here and there. So here for the top of the fifth is Jordan Brenner. Thank you, Michael. Well, Arizona is probably happy to see anybody buzz Samaria Diaz through three innings, but McKenna Cleethorne is a reliever in the fourth and struck out the side. And they're still dealing with her here in the fifth. one nothing Oregon, the difference, a leadoff blast to left center. Haley Cruz hit it. And in comes Carly Scoopin. Wide open stance from the left side. The freshman walked in the third. And against Cleethorne takes the first pitch away. It is 1-0. So, Jordan, another update on the Arizona strikeout tracker. 42 plate appearances, 21 of them. So exactly 50% have ended in Ks for Arizona right now. 1-0 to Scoopin. And he's back. Let's loose. Pitch long away. A ball, 2-0. And it's, it's just remarkable. I yeah. mean, this was... I mean, you and I, we're nerds about it. We look at these stats. We... We spent hours at it, and we were marveling at some of the numbers that this Arizona team was putting up this year. And I know they've struggled in road games and in rank games, but this is another level. 2-0 to Scoopin. And the pitch on the outside edge. Call a strike, 2-1. And, and Jordan, when I say this out loud, it doesn't feel real. We've watched Oregon pitchers get 21 strikeouts today. Like, that is just not what was expected. <laughs> today from the Oregon staff, yeah. 21 Ks and counting. 2-1 coming home to Scoopin from Cleethermis. Pitch low and away, it's now 3-1. Cleethermis has missed all three pitches low and away. So just gotta get in the zone here. Scoopin worked that walk in the third inning after fouling off a couple tough pitches. 3-1 coming in. Check swing on the corner. She was two steps to first, and Raven reels her back. So three and two. We are in the top of the fifth inning. Thanks so much for being here with us. KWVA, Jordan Brenner, and Michael Strike. Game three of four. Game two of the doubleheader. Full count to Scoopin. Swing and a line drive. Foul. Well outside third. She's had a tough time squaring, straightening those out. She's gotten a lot of hard contact this series, Michael, but... I don't even know how to describe her plate approach, but she is thinking the opposite field every time. So we'll do, see, we'll do three and two again. Swinging a grounder right to first this time. Bowden has it, taps the bag, one away. And that time she pulled it. And Bowden well positioned right near the line. And an easy play for the first out of the fifth. Next is Hannah Martinez. Grounded to the 5-4 fielder's choice in the third. Jordan, a, I'm going to keep saying it as long as it's true. The Wildcats have played 22 innings so far this weekend in Eugene. Hannah Martinez, their sole run. She's showing. Thinks to swing and cuts and misses. Nothing in one. So Martinez, she'll show nearly every time. And usually swing away. She did it on her home run yesterday. And there she does it again. Pulls it back. Fouls it off. 0-2. Oh Technically, Thermos, it's been a little bit of a rocky road for her recently in the Pac-12, her first trek through this conference. 0-2. Oh swing to ground her. Bunker dives for her, but can't get it. The third single for Arizona in this ball game. And they have a runner on as we flip the card to the top with Janelle Mionio coming to the plate. Yeah, Jordan, in a lot of ways, we make it sound like Arizona's just been completely stumped, but they're getting 
runners in scoring position. They're getting runners on base. They're setting the table, I would say, for some of their best hitters to get things done. I mean, we saw Martinez and Palacios last game, back-to-back -back strikeouts with runners on second and third. That was a turning point. Another runner was stranded on third. Yuno shows, runner on first. She pulls it back and watches a ball on a close pitch, 1-0. The Wildcats, as far as the bottom of the order, it's kind of done what it's advertised to do, which is these players are getting on base and they're setting up players like Mionyo with RBI opportunities. And it's just been uh, tough going for that part of the order. 1 0. She lines it foul to the left side, a ball and a strike. You know, Mionyo has become such a leader on this team. And it's kind of crazy. One of her biggest advocates on the team, one of her closest friends is Jesse Harper, an All-American who, if you think about it, they are nearly opposites as players, right? Harper is one of the great home run hitters of her time. 1-1, one, one. hitting the edge. Cleve Thermos with a nasty pitch. It's 1-2. and two. I thought it was funny when Jesse Harper talked to the press about Mionio. They were doing a story about her. There was a recent feature, one of the outlets that covers Arizona very closely. Jesse Harper said of Mionio, that girl just can't get out. Boy, has that been true. One, two is lifted out of play to the left side. We'll do one and two again. And they pick her, they, they actually pick each other's brains in the batting cage quite a bit. And again, two different approaches at the plate. One a slap hitter, that's Mionio, one the power hitter and Harper. Yeah, I imagine they have a lot to learn from each other in their different styles. Both obsessed with the game. The one-two, swinging a chopper to short. Burrito pitches for one, no chance to turn two. But they get the lead, ru lead runner, six to four, on the force. Really sharp play by Burrito there. She kind of took that first step in on the ball, realized that the ball was kind of took a hop that was going to be difficult. She gave up on the double play potential essentially, but really made a nice play to make sure the ball still got in her glove, made the throw to second. Sometimes plays like that, you got to just acknowledge that you got the one out you were supposed to. So Mionio on first could be a spy here with two outs where she tries to steal as Arizona brings up a pinch hitter here in the fifth inning. They're going to sit Caranco down in favor of the right-handed hitter. It's Allie Skaggs. So they go right on right here. Skaggs, Cleve Thermos looking for the home run ball on the pitch low, one and to Skaggs. Last time we saw Allie Skaggs, she pinch hit in the seventh inning of the last game and took a softball right to the top of her helmet. Yeah, luckily she has the face guard on, but that could have been a scary play. So one and to Skaggs, a runner on, two gone in the fifth. And a little bit low, Long tried to frame it. It's two and oh. Would have been a strength to the shorter Caranco but not two Skaggs. So 2-0 to the utility player from Louisville, Kentucky. The runner on, they end the pitch. Foul back, 2-1. So Skaggs has been a really productive pinch hitter for this team. Not only is she two for her last four, but she's been on base three of her last five. And just a freshman, Michael, this was one of the most sought after high school players in the country. Number 13 nationally by the extra inning softball ranking. And the 2-1, count evens up on a foul back to the screen, two and two. Yeah, Ellie Skaggs playing pretty well. Like you said, off the bench, utility. And with five graduating seniors in this Arizona lineup, you gotta imagine Skaggs will be somebody that finds a lot more playing time next year. Two and two, Mionio on first, swinging a belted ball to right field deep towards the wall. It's gone. Ali Skaggs with a big hit off the bench, her fifth home run of the season, gives Arizona a 2 1 lead. Coach Candrea has finally pulled the right card out of his pocket. The pinch hit, two run home run for Skaggs. Just Barely leaking out over the right field fence, out of the reach of Cruz. Arizona takes a 2-1 lead. Right over that right field wall, just clears it. Great, great hitting by Skaggs. And 
really interesting to see what Skaggs is doing. As a freshman, last game, she got on base after pinch hitting for the senior, Palomino. And this game, she gets pinch hit for the senior, Caronco. And gets a game-changing home run, and the Wildcats are back in the lead. Yeah, they needed that one. Harper going to take a pitch in the dirt, and it's 1-0. Nobody warming. Actually, it looks like Breedlove warming in the Oregon bullpen. So 1-0, Arizona. They get their second long ball of the series. They get their second and third runs of the series. A newfound life in that dugout. 1-0 to Harper, who is 0-2 today. A strikeout and a pop-out. The 1-0 pitch. That zips in. That's Andrew, a strike. Arizona's just had nothing happening for them offensively all day today. And one swing of the bat, and now you're awake. All of a sudden, you got a one-run lead. It's really special what Skaggs has done for this Wildcats team right now. So one and one to Harper. Cleothermis dealing, swing and a miss. It's one and two. So it's been a now prolonged streak of outs and strikeouts that seems to have been broken up, disrupted by this Arizona order. They were due. One, two. Harper turns on it. Pops it back behind home. Ali Skaggs, the future of the program, making a difference now for Arizona. The two-run home run out of nowhere, seemingly. Two runs on four hits now for Arizona. The one-two coming into Harper. Swing and a miss. They got her. The Thurman strikes out her fourth batter but not before the Wildcats make some noise. Two runs on two hits. The two runs shot off the bench by Ali Skaggs. No errors and nobody left on base. We're through four and a half. Arizona takes a 2-1 lead on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Bottom of the fifth inning, we got a new ball game. Arizona taking a 2-1 lead over Oregon in the top half. Ali Skaggs, the pinch hit home run riding that wind out to right field, an opposite field shot for fifth home run as a freshman. So Oregon trying to tie the game in the bottom of the fifth. They'll bring up Sid Bowden, Pangolinen. Six, seven, eight in the order. And the first pitch, a strike at the knees to Sid on one. Bowen is a redshirt junior. This is her first year in fourth year in college. And yet she's never faced Oregon, at least entering this weekend she had. 0-1, she's had a lot of success now against the Ducks. The 0-1 is high, one ball, one strike. Yeah, we weren't talking about it enough because of how Arizona had zero runs, but Oregon now, it's on them to score. They're trailing by one, and they've only had two base runners all day today. I mean, not all day in this game. 1-1 one, one to Sid. They pitch her away. She pops it well up. Foul territory right side. Scoop in near the net makes the catch. Pop out to the first baseman. Next up coming is Shea Bowden. Yeah, the leadoff home run from Cruz. Bunker had a base hit in the fourth. Look at three through nine in the order. You are looking at a lot of offers, a lot of pop-ups, a lot of flyouts from Scoopin. She hasn't had to go to the strikeout stuff today. She only has one K in the ballgame. Pitch is low to Bowden. Want to know. Yeah. I think she's starting to lock in too, Michael. You look... Now she's starting to pound hitters lower in the zone. And when she's missing, she's not missing by much. One of those coming home to Shea Bowden. That is cutting action. It misses a little high, and Bowden is ahead 2-0 and in the count. Yeah, and we talked about how many strikeouts the Wildcats have. It's fascinating, too, just what a polar opposite is on the other side. I mean, Arizona, where they got... Three strikeouts in the entire game from Denham and only two strikeouts today from Bowen. And the Y and the 2-0. And down the pipe, a strike. Correction, just one from Bowen today so far. It's like they're pushing great. They're getting outs. They're just getting a lot of soft contact, ground balls, pop outs. And maybe that's part of the reason why Arizona leads the Pac-12 by a pretty big margin in double plays turned is they just have ground ball pitchers. 2-1 to Bowden, swinging a line drive into left field. Clean single for Bowden. The third hit for Oregon. The Ducks have the tying runner on. 
So here we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Oregon looking to come from behind. They're down two to one. The difference, the two run shot from Ali Skaggs. Game three of four, Oregon taking the first two conference games as Hannah Gailey comes in to pinch run for Bowden. So Arizona has two runs on four hits, no errors. Oregon has a run on three hits, no errors. We see for Arizona some action in the bullpen with Alyssa Denham getting loose. She took the loss in game one. And maybe a sacrifice spot here for Pangolina. The runner on first, let's see. The corner's playing in for that sacrifice. Bowen, bearing him for a sign from Palacios, has it. Delivers a pitch below the knee. Got the ball. Pangolinan got a rally going in game one for Oregon in, this, in the fifth inning. That was when she was hitting ninth, a double to right center, and then scored on a Cruz double the next batter. 1-0. Checks her swing, lays off a pitch away. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, and that was her first extra base hit of the season with that double in the last game. She's going to need another extra base hit if she wants to pick up RBI number five on the season in this one. Two and oh. Swing and a foul. Right side. Backspin off the edge of the bat. We got a note, Jordan. Like we said, no sacrifice bunt attempt. It's one of those opportunities, but she's putting her faith in Pangolinen. You could have set it up with the runner on second, two outs for Valerie Wong, but instead she wants to see if Pangolinen could get it done. Two one, and she takes another pitch outside. Three balls and a strike. And maybe you just work a walk here. That's an option. Always an option, and. Very few walks from this Arizona staff all, all weekend. Heading towards that six o'clock hour into the evening. 3-1 to Pangolinen. Pitch comes in tight and it's ball four. So Bowen walks Pangolinen on five pitches. Oregon now is the go ahead run. On base, the tying run in scoring position and Valerie Wong out of the nine hole looking for the hit. She's seven of 32 this season. One extra base, it was a double. And has seven runs batted in. Yeah, here comes Valerie Wong, like we said. Most of the time catcher, able to play a little bit shortstop if needed. Two on, and the pitch scrapes the outside edge for a strike, nothing and one. Hannah Bowen is just unfazed. I mean, that's just her pitch. Right there on the outside corner, called strike. Doesn't care who's on base. Doesn't really mind that she just walked somebody. She's like, that's all right, I'm gonna do my thing. So the 0-1 dips down, fires a pitch away, one on one. So the strategy, it seems, Michael, they're looking at that outside corner. Yep, definitely, that's just how, where Hannah Bowen lives. Yeah, especially the righties. In particular, Brito and Sid. So maybe you think the opposite field here. Two on, one out. Ducks down two to one. Swing and a foul back to the screen. It's one and two. Must win game, I think, for Arizona if they want to host a super regional in Tucson. A win Oregon would like to have if they want to host a regional in Eugene. The one, two, swing and a miss. Breaking pitch to the corner and Wong out ahead of it. The second strikeout for Bowen today and two on, two out. Here comes the player of the day, Haley Cruz. Woke everybody up in the first inning with that home run to left center. Gets an ovation from the Spares crowd here. Cruz with two on and two out. Bowen, the sign, the whirl, missing away, one and zero on a close pitch. Yeah, and you look at what Arizona has to do after this series, it's the opposite of Oregon. Oregon gets to play California, a team near the bottom of the conference. Arizona's got a brutal series ahead of them in the CCLA. The rock, the kick, the 1-0 is low. 
Two balls, no strikes to Cruz. And, and a meeting in the circle now. Yeah, so you have the meeting in the circle. And for Arizona, the storyline right now is kind of writing itself as two teams trending in opposite directions as the season is nearing its end, you know, heading into tournament play. Oregon struggling for a month, but they've come to life with two straight wins. Arizona having trouble getting it done on the road. And that's why this game is so huge for Arizona. And it's all on Hannah Bowen's shoulders right now to preserve this 2-1 lead and break the trend that is happening for the Wildcats right now. They've been in this position so frequently where they've been in tight games with ranked teams. It has not gone their way this season. 2-0 to Cruz, and pitch misses. Three balls, no strikes. Two and nine against ranked teams, and I'm sure Wildcats fans, and we know how passionate that fan base is, Michael, one of the best softball fan bases in the country. You know they're biting their nails at this point in the game. Bottom five, 3 0, two on, two out. And Bowen's back in the zone. Yeah. Three and one. Jordan, you said yesterday too, I mean, one of the most accomplished coaching staffs in the entire nation. So, of course, you're going to expect to compete against these ranked opponents. Let's see if Cruz gets her pitch. 3 1. And it's in. Swing and a liner off the netting. Filled up now, 3 and 2. And this is where Haley Cruz, I think, elevates from all conference to all American, Michael. Oh, yeah. With her ability to just wait for that pitch. And she'll foul off three, four. She's got all day. She doesn't have any plans later. So she's going to wait for the pitch to drive. The full count pitch. Cruz with a line drive. One hopper. It's by Caraco. Here comes Gailey. She scores, and the game's tied. Two to two, Cruz comes through again. Two out knock for Cruz. And the Ducks respond in the bottom of the fifth inning to tie the ball game. Haley Cruz is single-handedly making sure that this isn't her last actual weekend at Jane Sanders Stadium. They've This is senior weekend for her, the last regular season games at home, but She's making sure that they get to host that regional at least and potentially the super regional so that she gets to play a little bit more in front of this Jane Sanders crowd. Absolutely remarkable weekend. She has now six hits in the series if they do rule that one a hit, and I believe they will. Bunker swings and pops it behind home. So here's the situation. 2-2, two -two, bottom five. Number seven, Arizona. Number 12, Oregon. Allie Bunker, who's one for two at the plate. The go-ahead run on third. Cruz is on first. Cruz with the RBI knock to tie it up. Bunker looking for the big swing. 0-1 from Bowen. And right on the outside corner, nothing in two to Bunker. What a close series it's been. Oregon with two one-run wins. Now we're tied in the fifth, and the 0-2 to Bunker. She swings, it's a line drive, diving to left field. It's fair, it's down, it's an RBI single. The Ducks take a 3-2 lead. Allie Bunker coming through with her 46th RBI of the season. Right over the outstretched glove of Harper. Two to respond in the fifth. Oregon three, Arizona two. We talk about Haley Cruz being scorching hot. We also mentioned that Allie Bunker has not gotten going, gotten herself going, but now the two of them with back-to-back -back hits, and that's everything. McGowan attacks the first pitch. It's a fly ball to center. Palomino Cardoza is under it to make the catch. But Oregon fighting right back in this ball game after the two run shot in the top of the fifth. Oregon gets two runs. They do it on three hits, no errors. And they leave a pair of runners on base. Oregon with a 3-2 lead as we go to the sixth inning right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Well, after a lack of runs, really for the majority of this series here in game three of four in the second of the doubleheader, we get Four combined runs in the fifth inning. We're now in the sixth. It's Oregon three, Arizona two. Taking over for play-by-play -play, here is Michael Strike. 
Thank you. McKenna Clee Thermos was on the hook for the loss, but her offense gave her a big boost last inning with a single a walk and back-to-back -back singles from Haley Cruz and Allie Bunker, each nabbing an RBI for themselves. And Clee Thermos is now potentially in line for the win. First pitch actually gets a piece of Deja Mulipola, and that's going to be, I think, her sixth time this year getting on base via the hit by pitch. So she's pretty familiar with that, and this is a classic Deja Mulipola game with a single and a hit by pitch. She's found her way on base twice, which breaks her streak. She had three consecutive games coming into this game of not getting on base at least twice. So she's back in form, and she's on base, leading things off for the Wildcats. She represents the tying run. Here's Charlize Palacios. Shows bunt. Tries to bunt it. Sacrifice situation, but it goes foul. And can you uh, tell me where that bunt was located? It was Palacios. <laughs> Away from Sid. Anywhere but Rachel Sid. She really costs. tried to push it, and because she tried to push it away from Sid, she pushed it foul. Yeah, Rachel Sid has claimed possession of her side. So on the 0-1, we'll see if she tries it again. She tries it again right to Sid. Sid to second. Again, another out. The third time today that they've tried to bunt on Rachel Sid, and she has fired it over to second for the out. <laughs> what a day defensively for Rachel Sid. And you saw it was a conscious decision not to bunt it to Sid. She couldn't help it. She missed the bunt. Sid came charging in. And maybe the closest of the three plays, but enough velocity get, to get the out at second. Here's Malia Martinez. Right around first, one out. Fouled back into the net. And Jordan, I mean, if you've only watched, if these are the first softball games you've ever watched, um... That's, this is not how sacrifice bunts are supposed to work. Most of the time, you, they just throw to first, you advance the runner, you accomplish exactly what you want, but Rachel Sid decided she's going to play a little differently today, and she's just had the confidence to get three runners out at second base. The 0-1 pitch, fouled again to Malia Martinez, count is 0-2. I mean, what a clinic at third for Rachel Sid, and I'm sure Coach Candrea, who's as good as they come as a coach, I mean, he's got to talk about this lack of execution. I mean, that's got to be in the game plan now. Yeah. You can't bunt it to Sid and expect to get Here's away the with 02. it. And that's low. And yeah, Jordan, you brought it up. That first bunt attempt went foul down the first baseline. You could see a concerted effort to say, we want to sacrifice bunt, but we have to keep it away from Sid at all costs, and then it'll actually work. And like you said, a lack of execution means that Sid gets her hands on it again and no hesitation over to second. This pitch low, good pick by Wong to keep the runner at first. Count is still 2-2, but that's what's beautiful about Sid is you can't hesitate. You simply cannot think about what you're doing. She just charges the ball, picks it up, immediately launches to second and gets the runner by a half second, if not less than a half a second. And the 2-2 to Malia Martinez. Right up the middle, base hit for Malia Martinez. And the runners are now in scoring position. Second and first with one out. That was a loud sound. So mechanically, Thermos, she struggled a little bit. Two run home run. Hit the, hit the batter. Yeah. Loud noise on the base hit. See Samaria Diaz getting back up for Oregon. And I was about to say, Jordan. Yeah. Maybe to come in for the close. Here's Melissa Lombardi. I think we talked about this last weekend in Arizona State. There's a certain art to sort of buying as much time as humanly possible. Oh, yeah. For those pitchers to get those pitches in, get warm. You wait, you wait, and then you go out and talk, and then you talk for as long as possible, and then the pitcher comes in. Now, I'm not saying Clee Thermos is coming out just yet, but it is certainly on the table for Lombardi. She's got Reagan Breedlove, who we haven't seen yet in this series. She's maybe, got Samaria Diaz. Yeah, maybe you fake an injury if you're really desperate. Yeah, the, the, the art to it is you start with Wong and Cleve Thermos in the circle. Then the entire infield joins. And then Coach Lombardi, after milking it, will come out. Yeah. But this time it looks like they're sticking with Cleve Thermos in this big spot against a pinch hitter, Isabella Dayton. Yeah, you can see the umpire signaling to us here up in the booth about who's coming in. This is going to be a pinch hitter, so it will not be the scheduled hitter of Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, who is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts today. Instead, 
Isabella Dayton is on her way up. She's got 11 hits and 58 at bats. One double and one homer on the season. Another valuable bench piece for the Arizona Wildcats. Yeah, Marty. but Michael, she struggled this year. She's 0 for her last 18. Wow. So she's in Alyssa Brito territory, very similar. 0 for her last 18. And you saw the pinch hitting, though. It worked out already in this game for Arizona. Skaggs getting both the RBIs for the Wildcats on a two-run bomb. Gave them a 2-1 to one lead that they have since lost. They are now trailing 3-2, to two, and they're hoping that another pinch hitter could get it done. And Jordan, what do you think about potentially this being another sacrifice bunt opportunity? Are you just too afraid of Rachel Sid to try it? Yeah, I mean, you. I don't know if you make the call. Uh, you know, you got scooping on deck. She swung an okay bat. I, personally, I would just like two shots at getting a single. You had a tough time getting hits all day long. I would like two shots at getting that single. And on the sacrifice bump point, you just better make sure to pull it to the right side of the infield. Yeah. Put it to shortstop, the circle, the right side, anybody but Rachel Sip. So Isabella Dayton, like we said, off the bench, steps in lefty, mechanically thermos. It's on her shoulders in what's been an incredible series. Here's the pitch high for ball one. And yeah, it's been two fantastic games already. And another classic in the making here at Jane Sanders Stadium. The Ducks lead three to two. Runners are on first and second. Only one out. Lee Thermos versus Dayton. The 1-0 pitch. And she fires. Swung on and missed. 66, strike one. And how many times have we seen Clee Thermos in a tight spot like this, Michael? Just figure out a way to wiggle out of wiggle out of trouble. Oh yeah. I think that's why Melissa Lombardi opted to stay with Clee Thermos here. So much faith in her young righty. The one-one to Dayton. High ball two. Yeah, you said Clee Thermos. The closer mentality. She's been in exactly this situation before, protecting one-run leads, runners on base, in a lot of sort of jams, a lot of different kinds of situations, and she's unfaced. Here's the 2-1, though, to Dayton. On the outside, strike two calls. Getting a little help from this Oregon crowd here. Ducks looking to take a commanding 3-0 lead in this series. Came into the series as the underdogs. That's right, looking to take command of the 2-2. Oh, a little low, it seems like. And the fans don't approve of that, but it's going to set up a full count. Yeah, Cleetherm has really wanted that one. You could see a big exhale. I'm getting another look at it on the screen. Certainly high enough, maybe a tad outside. All right, so just a little bit outside. And it's, she's going to have to make another big pitch. The 3-2 to Dayton. And that's ball four called. Oh, and you see a little bit of confusion now. Some visible sort of displeasure from the Oregon infield. I think Allie Bunker in particular was hoping that would be a strikeout, and instead we get a ball four called. We have a walk, and the bases are loaded with one out for scooping. Yeah, another close pitch, getting another look at it. That one on the edge, maybe a little bit high to the lefty. The bases loaded. Megan Rabin has been ruling with a tight zone today. That's right. And Cleetherm is trying to fight through it. First pitch, scooping, slicing through the air into the gap. Dives, it's off the ground. One run scores. Another run coming to the plate. Safe. And that's a two run single on the first pitch for scooping. A dive from Deja Pangolin in center. Almost had a ridiculous grab, but instead it finds the grass and two runners come home. And a, a discussion now happening among the infield, among the umpires. Not sure if this will be potentially obstruction or interference or something of that sort. What an effort out in center by Pangolinen. Head first, full extension, dive. Scooping didn't exactly hit it too hard, but right in the middle of left and center field. A two-run double, and Arizona's offense has woken up against McKenna Thermos. 
four runs the last two innings. And a conversation with all the umpires here. Yep, we'll have to wait and see what the ruling is. I think it will have something to do with either interference or obstruction, some kind of chaos happening among the base paths. But we know for sure that Scoopin, great hit, first pitch right into the gap, almost caught by the center fielder Pangolinen. It falls, it ends up being a two RBI single for Scoopin, and the Wildcats have surged back into the lead four to three here in the top of the sixth. And Plethermis, that's two leads now that she has lost, and that might be the end of her day, we'll see. And now they roll the runner on first out. Wow. Scoopin's called out, how does that affect the runners at the plate? Yeah, that was unexpected. I'm not sure what. All right, we have the ruling, Jordan. So, Scoopin, after hitting it, the runners didn't know if it was going to be caught. So they couldn't leave their bases. And Scoopin ended up passing wow. the runner on first base, which was the pinch hitter, Dayton. So Scoopin, by virtue of passing that runner at first base, she gets called out simply for overlapping the runner accidentally. A mistake for her. You gotta be aware of where you're, where you're running. I mean, just stay on the bag at first or maybe even wait. Um, so a mistake there, but it's still a two RBI single and it's still a lead and it's gonna be a new pitcher. Reagan Breedlove coming in to try and shut things down and limit the damage for the Ducks. We'll give you Clethermis' line and talk about Reagan Breedlove after this short break. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. KWVA. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? Uh, in the woods, just outside of town. Oh, not surprising. You've got your home. Bears have theirs. Yeah, but see, this wasn't just any bear. This bear was wearing jeans and a hat, as in a smoky bear. Jeans and a hat. That's definitely smoky. What exactly did he have to say? Well, we, we were about to head home, you know, after having a bonfire. Oh, I can guess where this is going. Right, right. See, Smokey told me the fire was Hey, this is Joey McMurray, there. broadcaster for the Oregon IMG Sports Network and former sports director. But he's wearing Adidas pants. You can't do that. And you're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1. Welcome back. McKenna Thermos ends up going 1.2, or no, 2.2 innings and gives up four earned runs. And here's Reagan Breedlove with a runner on second base, two outs. Hannah Martinez at the plate. Hannah Martinez calls time as Breedlove takes a little bit long to get her sign. And now everyone's going to stop and wait. So this should be first and second one out, but Scoopin with a base running error, overlapping the other Wildcat runner, means she gets rolled out, and it's runner on second, two outs. Here's Martinez, right up the middle, snagged by Breedlove in the toss to first, and that is gonna be it for the top of the sixth, but a two run single by Scoopin gives the Wildcats back the lead in this classic game. That inning had two hits, one walk, a hit by pitch, two runs scored, and a runner left on second base. On the other side of this break, it's going to be Delgado, Brito, and Sid for the Ducks. But first, we send it inside the KWVA studios for a sports desk update with Adam Sussman. Welcome back. It's the bottom of the sixth in James Sanders Stadium. Game two of the doubleheader. The Ducks, they're back to trailing by one, and it's not going to be Bowen. She ends up going five innings, allowing three earned runs. It's back to our game one starter today. For game two of the series starter, Alyssa Denham. Yeah, Alyssa Denham is as good as they come. A 1 8 3 ERA, Michael, 16 and 6 this season. 111 innings. She has 86 strikeouts, 30 walks. Yep. We're seeing home plate umpire Megan Rabin all the way down the dugout to talk with the Arizona dugout. She's going to return now. They're just figuring out the details of who's coming in where and what changes are being made. But the Wildcats have surged back into the lead. They're up four to three, and the Ducks now find themselves down one with only six outs left to play with. It'll be Hannah Delgado first. And also thank you to Adam Sussman for that sports desk update. Jordan, I know the NBA season is getting very exciting right oh, yeah. now. And as uh, I'm a Golden State Warriors fan, I know you're a Lakers fan. I know that a lot of people around the NBA are 
quietly hoping to watch the Warriors and Lakers play in a potential playoff play-in game. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm a basketball fan and a Lakers fan almost on equal footing. So part of me wants to see that too. That's that's must-watch TV. And by the way, defensively, a change for Arizona here as Ali Skaggs comes in for Rainer Caranco, both at the play and in the field at second. Yeah, so that's kind of what's causing the delay right now. This inning should have gotten underway, but we're getting all these changes finalized with both managers. They want to make sure everything's legal, everything makes sense. Skaggs is the new second baseman in the field. Obviously, you want to keep Skaggs in this game. She hit a two-run blast earlier, and she'll be due up next inning if she remains in the lineup. So that's Skaggs at second base. And finally, things will get underway. Four to three, the Wildcats on the brink of taking their first game of this series, but it's now in the hands of Alyssa Denham. First pitch to Hannah Delgado, strike one. Hannah Delgado, 0 for two in this game. She went one for three with a single in the earlier game of this doubleheader. The 0-1 fouled for strike two. Middle of the lineup for the Ducks, Delgado, Brito, and Rachel Sid do up. Kind of turned into a seesaw fair here, Michael. Two runs in each of the last three half innings in this ball game. Yeah, Delgado, this one's gonna be ball one, so she watches that one. You're right, six runs in the last three half innings pretty much. I mean, all of the offense for this whole weekend has kind of been crammed into the last few minutes of action. The one-two pitch. Oh, and a late swing, but Delgado does just enough to foul it off on the off speed. Real slow stuff there from Denim. And yeah, there's no guarantee right now with the way the lineup is that Cruz or Bunker is gonna get up for the Ducks. They need these hitters in the bottom of the order to get on. Fouled into the net for Delgado. Here we are in the fourth spot of the order with six outs left. So obviously all you need is one player to get on base. Or you know you need even more than that. You, Yeah, you just need one player to get on base and Cruz will come up. You need only a couple to get Bunker up, but that's a huge priority for the Ducks. High ball two as most of the production today has come from Haley Cruz and Allie Bunker. The Ducks have six, five hits right now. Four of those five hits, Haley Cruz and Allie Bunker, with the only other one coming from Shea Bowden. Here's the pitch. Delgado fouled again, and this has quietly become a really great at bat for Hannah Delgado. Well, she had that slow motion swing that she's known for to foul off that tough one. And then she's hit two more foul balls after that. So Delgado continuing to show off that tremendous plate discipline. Yeah, so Brito in the on-deck circle. The 2-2 for Hannah Delgado trying to act as the leadoff hitter in this one. Another slow motion swing could fall off the glove of the left fielder. That is... Mionio in left had charged the ball, almost made the catch, and it ends up bouncing off of her glove. So that's going to be something for Delgado. She's on first no matter what. We'll have to check and see if it's another error for the Wildcats. It certainly was a tough play for Mionio, but I think the general rule of thumb is that if it hits your glove, you got to catch it. Well, there's still so much value in an era where we talk a lot about home runs, Harper and Matty Hackbar. There's still something to be said about putting the ball in play with two strikes, and that's what Hannah Delgado did. Oh, Brito flashes to bunt and pops out on the first pitch. We've seen this before from Alyssa Brito. That was a clear sacrifice bunt opportunity. She had a huge chance to sacrifice bunt in the UCLA series here at Jane Sanders Stadium and did the exact same thing where she just popped out. So certainly a trend for Brito. And that's got to hurt as the slump continues for her, and that was one pitch out. And here comes Rachel Sid now with one out, and Delgado still on first. First pitch again, grounded to the second baseman, the flick to second, one out, no throw to first, so it'll just be a fielder's choice, but two pitches and two outs. What a rally killer for the Ducks. Yeah, it was a tough hop at second for Ali Skaggs. Welcome to the ball game. She almost had one eat her up, but able to stay in front of it, get one at second. And had there not been that odd hop at the end, I think there would have been a good chance to get Sid in turn two. Yeah, Jordan, and the scorer's ruling now finally comes in 
That is going to be an error charged to the left fielder. First pitch to Bowden. Strike one called. But, yeah, that's an error on Mionio. A very a tough day for the Wildcats defense now. Two errors, which we said this is going to probably knock them out of first place in the whole conference in terms of fielding percentage. Now, with double plays and everything else considered, this pitch slow and a little high for ball one. With all everything else considered, like the double plays and having the best fielding catcher in the nation, the Wildcats may well still be the best defense in the conference, but if you just looked at fielding percentage, two errors today have definitely hurt that. So that's an E7 to Mionio and the 1-1 pitch a little outside as that zone for Megan Rabin comes back into play. You got to give her credit. She's being consistent. She's making both pitchers earn it. And that's part of the reason why I think the run scoring is up a little bit. Both pitchers having to just work a little bit harder. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Shea Bowden. Low, ball three. And only the third career, rather the second error of the season for Mionio. So she's as sure-handed as they come in left field. Just an odd day for Arizona in the field. Yeah, here's the 3-1 to Bowden. And that's ball four. You can see it, good pitches by Alyssa Denham, but it's just a, a little bit smaller of a zone today, or at least in this game compared to the last one. Shea Bowden draws a walk, and that's the second time Shea Bowden is on in this game. So she's having a little bit of a senior moment herself in this weekend. And now it's gonna be first and second, a big opportunity for Deja Pengalini. Two outs, first pitch, inside and low. Ball one called and Alyssa Denham, a little bit of a head nod. She knows what she did wrong on that one. I think she's gonna correct it, but no denying. Yeah, you're gonna see the manager or the pitching coach, I would say, come out and have a quick chat. This is what happens, you know? I see it a lot more in collegiate softball, I think, than college baseball or MLB baseball, for example. In the middle of counts, if you see something you want to correct mechanics-wise, you just go out and have a quick chat. And Alyssa Denham doing everything she can to hold on to this one-run lead. Yeah, and remember Deja Pangolinen had the double to right center off of Denham in the first game of the doubleheader. So that's also part of this conversation with Pangolinen ahead 1-0. And two on, two out on the pass. Oregon trying to climb back into this one and tie the game at four. Yeah, we've seen the... Uh, pitchers in line for the win has bounced around. First it was Bowen, then it was Clee Thermos. Now it's back to Denham in line for the win. Bunt shown, but pulls back. Strike one called. It's a 1-1 one -one count. So Denham is the third pitcher of this game. Uh, I Correct me if I'm No, Diaz too. So Denham is the fourth pitcher of this game that is in line for the win. And if Oregon can take the lead in this inning, uh, then you'll see Reagan Breedlove in line for the win as she got the last out of the last inning. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Pangolina. A little high, but a late strike call, and the fans don't like it, but it's going to be a 1-2 count. Megan Raven's hearing it. Another close pitch. That one looked a little bit up. It's a pitch that last inning, Klee Thermos wasn't getting before she got shelled to end the frame. Here's the 1-2 to Pangolina. And that one's low for ball two. And I got a little bit of umpiring experience, Jordan. In my opinion as an umpire, the toughest games are the ones that just have a million close pitches. Pitches that could honestly go either way. It puts you in such a tough spot as an umpire because you're going to make somebody really unhappy. The 2-2 two -two, grounded up the middle. It's a slow grounder. Pangolinen has a chance, and she's safe at first. A little bit of a hesitation getting the ball out of the glove. And it's going to be, I think, an infield hit on the chopper from Pangolinen. Yeah, just a well-placed ball by Pangolinen. High chopper over Denham, who's quite tall. Well-placed. Pangolinen runs well. The base is loaded. Here comes the pinch hitter, Gabby Herrera. Wow, Gabby Herrera coming up. This is the nine spot in the order. It would have been Valerie Wong, but instead, Gabby Herrera gets a chance. She has just... 10, 11 plate appearances on the year. She is three for 10 with a walk and a double. But last weekend, Michael, Herrera went two for three and broke up a no-hitter from Allison Royalty. She's swinging the bat well right now. 
And this is a huge opportunity for Herrera in her young Oregon career. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Bases loaded, two outs, down by one, late in a ball game. Everything you want about Pac-12 softball in the Conference of Champions right here. The 1-0 pitch, hard out to right field, and it's going to be foul, but a great swing on it by Herrera. Everybody kind of leaped out of their feet all at once right there. Herrera really squaring that up right on that pitch. Now she's got to straighten that up, hit it to one of the gaps. Gabby Herrera, no career home runs yet as a duck. The 1-1 pitch, and that's outside for ball two. So she's got herself into a 2-1 count. Like we said, Herrera, this is her first year, just has the one double as far as extra base hits. And she was pretty great. Last weekend, like you said, went two for three. So Lombardi hoping that this move pays dividends. The 2-1 to Herrera. Swung on, high to center field. Center fielder under it. That's Palomino making the grab. And that is it. Bases loaded, three runners left on for the Ducks. And they will still be trailing by one. That inning had one hit, one walk, one error, and three left on base. The Ducks will still trail by one. You're listening to KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Welcome back. At least one inning left to play in what has been an incredible weekend of softball. So many incredible moments. And to call this seventh inning, here's Jordan Brenner. Thank you, Michael. Oregon loading the bases in the bottom of the sixth, but they strand three runners on base, so they still trail four to three as we head to the last inning. Mionio. Skaggs, Harper do up for Arizona. Mionio swings at the first pitch, bounced off the mask of Wong. And she's going to wave off fellow catcher Shea Bounham before she even gets there to see if she's okay. And it's 0-1 to Mionio. And you see the umpire Raven going out to talk to Bree Love. You just do that to give the catcher some time. One of my favorite things about softball is that relationship between the catcher and the umpire if the umpire takes one off the mask you see the catcher run out to the circle yep. give the umpire a little <laughs> bit of a break so you see Rabin doing her job going out and just buying Wong some time to recalibrate and we're back so 0 one to Mionio who's one for three with a run score Mionio running ahead pitch skips him a ball and a strike from Friedlove so the third Oregon pitcher in the circle in this one game one Oregon took it one to nothing a complete game Shutout for Brekianes, her fifth shutout of the season, her 11th complete game of the season. It's been a little bit tougher in game two to get outs. 1-1. One, one. So we're going to ground her, pass in, throw the first. No chance to get Mionio. Once it gets past that first line of defense, it doesn't matter with her speed. And she's got a two-hit game in game three at the Jane. Yeah, Jordan, what was that quote again from Jesse Harper? She hates getting out. She just doesn't get out. That girl can't get out. <laughs> there we go. Jesse Harper, 2021. Oh, and it is true as ever for somebody that <laughs> has a, is threatening to bat 500 this season. I mean, it's crazy. Just a redshirt freshman, too. Allie Skash showing bunt. It's laid down in front of home. Sid, this time, her only played a first. Finally, a well-executed bunt for Arizona. So a runner on second, Mionio moving into scoring position. Skaggs gets the bunt down. <laughs> you can see it, Rachel Zid fielding that and just going, all right, I'll throw the first this time. And, and you can see Coach Candrea with a deep sigh of, of <laughs> relief there. Finally, his team gets the sacrifice down. So an insurance run in scoring position. Here is Jesse Harper. She's over through the pair of strikeouts in this ball game. Pitch from Breedlove. Harper takes pitch high. And when Harper's locked in, like she was, for example, against uh, Team USA last year, she can take any pitcher in the world out. Took Ali Carta out, one of the greats in the world, the 1 0. He's off the plate, 2 0. Also mm -hmm. took Kelly Osterman out, a lefty. These are two former All Americans. I mean, Harper can hit anybody when she's locked in. Right now, she isn't. So she did have a pair of hits in game one. 2-0 to Harper. And pitch is high and away, 3-0. Yeah, Jordan, I think Harper's about the only Wildcat that can say, bring Yanez back. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> she, she got a double and a triple against Yanez, and now she's, what is it, 0 for 3 against Diaz and Klee Thermos. And so today, this game hasn't been the game for her, but she was the only Wildcat that felt comfortable in the box against Yanez. Quick chat between Wong and Breedlove before this 3-0 pitch. One away, top of the seventh, 4-3, to three, Arizona over Oregon. Breedlove, who wears number 12, has her sign coming in. And walks her on four pitches. Wanted nothing to do with Jesse Har Harper there. Two on and one out. Deja Mulipola will come in. And she has been the hitter that's been tough to get out today in this one, Michael. Yeah, and Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you got a little bit better vantage point. The Oregon bullpen is empty. I think this is just Reagan Breedlove's game, no matter what. This is it. You're absolutely right. No action brewing. Will we pull at the plate? Two on, one out. Here's the pitch. And the pitch is at the top of the zone, called a strike. The borderline pitch this time going Oregon's way. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta call it both ways for Megan Raven. Half time with a good call for Oregon. 0 oh 1. Breedlove's pitch. Muli Polo grounder to third. Sid taps the back, throws to first, a double play. 5 to 3. Rachel Sid on defense today has taken it to another level. And the Ducks out of the jam in the seventh. No runs, one hit, no errors. A runner left on base. 4 3 Arizona. The Ducks try to tie it or walk it off. In the bottom of the seventh, they have Cruz Bunker McGowan coming up. Awfully familiar to what we saw a night ago. Don't turn the dial. I don't expect you will. We're coming back with the bottom of the seventh on KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Back for the bottom of the seventh inning, 4-3 Arizona over Oregon. These two teams trading runs in this one. Oregon got off to the one nothing lead because of Cruz. That was a leadoff home run in the first. The first pitch to Cruz is outside, it's one and oh. So the Ducks down one in the bottom of the seventh inning, just like they were a night ago. And there you see the rally caps, just like Oregon had last night in the seventh inning, one and oh to Cruz. And a pitch is breaking, and it's down at the knees, called a strike, one and one. In the game last night, Cruz let off the Inning with a single, was sacrificed to second before Tara McGowan's two-run heroic walk-off home run. One and one, down him to Cruz. Pitch is low, called a ball, two and one to Cruz. It's been quite the series already for Oregon. Taking the first two games by combined one run. Came into the series as underdogs, two one to Cruz. A strike, two and two, Cruz is working the count. And Cruz has caught fire on senior weekend. Two for three today in the second game. Went three for three in game one, so five of six combined with two singles, a double, a triple, and a homer. Two, two, high and away, the count's full to Cruz. Take a look at the rally caps in the Oregon dugout, Michael. Yeah, Jordan, F. Oregon finds their way into another one-run win. This would really shake the softball world. 3-2 to Cruz, it's outside, ball four. The tying run aboard, here comes Bunker. Will we see her sacrifice like we did a night ago? Oh, Jordan, this is such a big decision for Melissa Lombardi and the coaching staff. Ali Bunker, in a way, you just kind of want to repeat exactly what you did. You walked off a game with Haley Cruz getting on, Allie Bunker sack bunting, and then Tara McGowan got it done. But Allie Bunker has back-to-back -back singles. She's found her game. She's hot. I don't think you want to mess with that. I expect to see her swing away, actually. Corners in to Bunker. She pops the bunt up, but it's off of the netting, and it's 0-1. Wow. When Oregon fans saw that bunt popped up, I think some heart stopped because the last thing you want to see right now is a pop out on a bunt attempt and now one strike we'll see if you try it again everybody knows it's coming I said it, I was wrong about saying that they would bunt here and I'm going to predict again we'll see if I'm wrong again that this is actually going to be now swinging away for Ali Bunker tying run Cruz on first 0-1 Bunker offers at it but can't get the bunt down in its own two 
So maybe now you tell Bunker to swing away. Yeah. Four to three, Arizona. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Bunker the winning run at the plate. She's two for three in an 0-2 hole against Alyssa Denham. On its way, the pitch is low. One ball and two strikes to Bunker. Yeah, Jordan, the good news is Bunker is one of the toughest hitters to strike out in the entire conference and up there in the entire country is one of the toughest strikeouts. She only has five on the season. So she's as comfortable as ever in these two strike counts. One and two to Bunker. Swing and a miss, Barry down low. Denham with a dirt bound softball to strike out Bunker. One away in the bottom of the seventh. And here comes McGowan. Everybody in the stadium thinking the same thing. McGowan trying to extend. Rather, she, her hitting streak was broken up in the first game today. And the first pitch to McGowan is a strike. Well, what's everybody thinking? They're thinking about what happened a night ago. A jolt of life into Oregon's season. The two-run walk-off home run in the seventh inning. Has a chance to do the same here. She's the winning run at the plate. Cruz the tying run on first. The 0-1 down in the dirt. A ball and a strike. And if you're McGowan here, Michael, I think the instinct is to swing really hard, but a base hit would be awfully useful too with Delgado on deck. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. McGowan swinging for the fence is out ahead of a breaking ball at 51. It's one and two. Yeah, great pitch by Denham to get her off balance. See Denham. She goes again to the breaking ball. Denham's ready, has her sign, sets, and pitches. That one's low. McGowan laying off of this one. It's two and two. Chilly day here at the Jane. Oregon trying to sweep the doubleheader. Trailing by a run in the bottom of the seventh. 2-2 two -two to McGowan. Swing and a tapper. Foul. Arizona wanted it to be fair. It was right off the plate. Fielded by Palacios in foul territory. And if that ends up being a fair ball, Jordan, you're not just looking at a strikeout. You're looking at a potential double play to end this game. So a huge break for McGowan. She's still at the plate. Still has a chance to be a hero again. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Swing and a foul behind home again. McGowan refusing to go down right now. And that was a hanging breaking pitch. So Denham, after a mistake there to McGowan, takes a little bit more time between this pitch. 2-2. Two -two. McGowan takes the pitch away. The count runs full. It's 3-2. Cruz walked to lead off the inning. Then Bunker struck out after failing to get the sacrifice down. Here is Tara McGowan. The Ducks down 4-3. 3-2 pitch, swing and a miss, they pumped it by her. McGowan down swinging on strikes. Alyssa Denham digging deep for the K. That is her second strikeout in a row and her second strikeout of the ball game. Delgado next. She's 0 for three, but reached on an error. Uh, first pitch, a strike on the outer part of the plate to Delgado. Yeah, it may have been charged as an error, but it was a really well hit ball and that slow swing by Delgado that you talked about. She's also feeling pretty good right now. 0-1 to Delgado, swing and a liner foul. It's 0-2. Arizona is one strike away from getting their first win in this series. 33-10 overall, 11-7 in the conference, but have struggled this year against ranked teams, just two and nine, looking for that third win. 0-2, two, two outs, Denham deals. Pitch away, Delgado takes a borderline pitch. It's one and two. Thanks for being here with us on KWVA. As intense as it gets throughout this series and another big moment here. One, two, two out, last of the seventh and the pitch. Swing and a grounder through the left side, a base hit for Delgado. Here comes Alyssa Brito with two outs and a chance to break out of her slump and to deliver 
the big hit and Melissa Lombardi pulls her aside and has a word. Michael, what is she telling the young freshman shortstop, Melissa Brito? Oh, Jordan, I'm not even sure, but whatever Melissa Lombardi just said, I think that's what where she makes, this is the moments as a coach where you get, you get your salary, right? You make your money. And I think what you say to Alyssa Brito here is to just be yourself, just play your game. You might just give her a quick pointer about denim specifically, what pitch to look for, what approach to take. But in general, Alyssa Brito, you can't think about the slump you're in. You just got to bat. Brito takes the first pitch down the middle for a strike. It's been a freshman year slump recently for Brito. Had the big series against Stanford then traveled and struggled in Tempe. And has struggled in this series 0 for her last 23. Oh, one swing and a miss, it's 0 and 2. Denham has two Ks today, both in this inning. The tying run is Cruz on second. The winning run is Delgado on first. Plenty of speed on the pads. 0 and 2 to Brito, a breath and she steps back in there. Denham's pitch, swing and a tapper. And it goes foul, and we'll do 0-2 again. That's a big deal that Brito could tap that one foul. I mean, this is somebody with 38 strikeouts on the year, trying to avoid number 39. Really big for your confidence to just get a piece of it. She's kind of settled in a little bit. I mean, it's still 0-2, and you're not sure if this is going to be a pitch to hit because Denham can waste one. 0-2 to Brito. Breaking pitch, he lays off of it, but a check swing. Thought about it. And did not break her wrist, one and two. Oh, you can see Brito evolving through this at bat. She fouls one off. She just holds back on a breaking pitch. She's getting more and more comfortable as this plate appearance continues. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Brito with a tapper to the left side, hooking foul, and it is foul. Martinez grabs it about six inches left of the third base bag, and Brito staying alive. So here we are, bottom of the seventh inning. The Wildcats four, the Ducks three. Oregon has won both games of the series so far by one run. One and two to Brito. Swing and a pop up inside the infield. Scoopin making the call is under it and has it. Arizona takes game three, four to three. The Ducks bring the tying and winning runs on, they, they get the tying and winning runs on the paths, and Brito's slump continues with two outs in the seventh. She can't come through. Arizona taking game three, four to three, and another close ball game. Michael, Arizona really needed that win here today. Oh, it's such a huge out for Denim. She started the first game today. She only gave up one run in a losing effort. Really tough to do that as a pitcher to get charged with a loss when it's a 1-0 game. She comes in with a lead to protect and she closes this one out. She gets out of two jams. She got a huge out against Gabby Herrera with the bases loaded and just got a huge out against Alyssa Brito with runners on first and second. That is a hard earned save for Denim. 4-3 final in seven. It was about as exciting as they come, but Oregon ultimately strands a few too many. They strand eight runners in this 4-3 loss to Arizona, but the Ducks did take the conference game in game one of the doubleheader, one to nothing. A split in the doubleheader. Oregon still leading the series two to one. Arizona gets the win. They improve to 34 and 10 this year, 12 and 34 and 10. Still 11 and 7 in the Pac-12. Oregon is now 33 and 14. Still 11 and 9 in the Pac-12. We're going to pause, take a break. We have more on the Oregon softball post-game show coming, including highlights and stats. Keep it tuned to KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. Awfully close for both games of the doubleheader. Thanks for being here with us all day long on KWVA. Jordan Brenner and Michael Stripe. Michael, take a deep breath. We're going to take the listeners through the highlight show and then we'll get your final thoughts before getting out of here game four coming tomorrow at noon we'll start with the first game of the doubleheader today and brooke yanez in the circle what a performance it was for brooke yanez in game one well it started off she struck out a batter in a one two three first sitting 
Our first highlight, though, is in the third. A scoreless ball game. Pitchers duel between Alyssa Denham and Brooke Yanez. It looked like Oregon found some life in the third inning. Haley Cruz came through with this big hit. Turned around quickly. The scorching ground ball down the line from Cruz. She's turning, digging for second. This could be three. She's on her way to third. And it's going to be a stand-up triple for Haley Cruz. Oregon would strand Cruz on third base with two straight flyouts to left field, so we were scoreless through three innings. Coming to the fourth inning, Deja Mulipola, the All-American, hit a single. Then Jesse Harper hit a double off of the fence, and Arizona had two on with one out. Malia Martinez struck out swinging. Charlize Palacios came to the plate with two in scoring position and two outs in the inning, looking for the big hit to take the lead. And here's what happened. Brooke Yanez did her count. thing. Here it comes. Soft, off speed. And a strike three called for Yanez. She started celebrating that before the umpire even called it. She knew that was a perfectly placed pitch. And that is strikeout number seven for Yanez as the Ducks get out of a jam. And the score is still 0-0. Oregon finally came through in the bottom of the fifth inning. Still scoreless, a one-out double for Deja Pangolin and gave the Ducks a runner in scoring position. And who else but Haley Cruz coming up with the big hit. Still scoreless, bottom five. Pangolin with the extra base hit to right center. The 2-2, Cruz with a line drive again into right center. Here comes Pangolin and the Ducks take the lead. Cruz in the second standing. She has a single, a double, a triple today. The Ducks won the Arizona Wildcats. Nothing in the fifth inning. And that's Oregon would need. Brooke Yanez, it was a special day for her. She came up in the seventh inning. She already had 10 Ks. Malia Martinez came to the plate. Brooke Yanez with her 11th strikeout to start the seventh. One and two to Martinez. Yanez has her sign coming to the plate. She struck her out looking. The 11th for Yanez. Down goes Martinez. Then the next hitter, Charlize Palacios, came up. Another excellent hitter. And she struck out for the third time in game one. Is on the center of the rubber. Twisting, turning, coming home. She got her swinging. Yanez has a dozen strikeouts in her fourth in a row. That's right, her fourth in a row, a dozen strikeouts for Yanez. Then she actually hit Ali Skaggs, the pinch hitter, which put the tying run on base. But it was Yanez's day, and she took game one of the series for Oregon. The Ducks went up two to nothing in the series. A ball and two strikes. Swing and a little fly ball in the infield. Giannis takes it herself. A complete game shutout. Oregon wins the series. And in game two, one nothing final. What a spectacular moment it was for Giannis. And the Ducks take the series against a top 10 opponent in Arizona. Game two was a different story. We'll take you through it now. In the first inning, Oregon got off to the great start. Remember, Cruz, we played the triple, we played the double. She had a single in the first in game one, a triple in the third, a double in the fifth. Didn't get that fourth at bat. So Cruz came up her next time up and completed a Cruz cycle with a leadoff home run to left field. Valerie Wong catching, hitting ninth. 2-1 to Cruz. Turns on one, see ya! Way back left field, it's at the wall and it's gone! Haley Cruz, a single, a double, a triple, a homer in the last four at-bats. The Ducks take a one nothing lead. Cruz's seventh home run of the season in the first inning. And Oregon took a one nothing lead and they were getting it done early on in the circle. So Maria Diaz struck out the side in order in the first inning. A leadoff single in the second was quickly deleted after a sacrifice bunt, a strikeout of Malia Martinez, and then the fifth strikeout by Samaria Diaz to get out of the jam. 
One ball, two strikes. Palomino Cardoza can't get it. Up the ladder for the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Samaria Diaz. No runs exchanged until the fifth inning when Arizona State got a runner on base. They pinch hit for Reina Caronco, who had been struggling in the series. She was 0 for 2 with two strikeouts at that point. So they went with another young player, Ali Skaggs. And boy, was it a great call by Coach Candrea. Two run shot off the bench for Ali Skaggs. 2 and 2, Mione on first, swinging a belted ball to right field deep towards the wall. It's gone. Ali Skaggs with a big hit off the bench, her fifth home run of the season. Gives Arizona a 2-1 lead. 2-1 to one lead at that point, and Oregon, though, wouldn't sit around. They came back in the bottom of the fifth inning. Shea Bowden had a single, Pangolinen walked, and Haley Cruz came up again with a big hit in the fifth inning to tie the game. The full count pitch. Cruz with a line drive. One hopper, it's by Caraco. Here comes Gailey, she scores and the game's tied. Two to two, Cruz comes through again. Two out knock for Cruz. And the Ducks respond in the bottom of the fifth inning to tie the ball game. And the Ducks weren't done. Allie Bunker was the next hitter and here's what she did. Fair, it's down, it's an RBI single. The Ducks take a 3-2 lead. Allie Bunker coming through with her 46th RBI of the season. Right over the outstretched glove of Harper. So there you heard it. Oregon took the lead 3-2 at that point. But then in the sixth inning, Arizona State's, or Arizona rather, their offense still wasn't done. And it was Carly Scooping who came to the plate with a two-run single. And Cleithermis trying to fight through it. First pitch, Scooping slicing through the air into the gap. Dives, it's off the ground. One run scores. Another run coming to the plate. Safe. And that's a two run single on the first pitch for Scoopin. A dive from Deja Pangolin in center. Almost had a ridiculous grab, but instead it finds the grass and two runners come home. That's all Arizona would need. Oregon let off the bottom of the seventh inning with a cruise walk. Delgado had a two out hit. Oregon had the tying and winning runs aboard. Alyssa Brito had been 0 for her last 23, hoping to break out of the slump in a big way. Here's what happened. One and two to Brito. Swing and a pop up inside the infield. Scoopin making the call is under and has it. Arizona takes game three, four to three. And that did it in the second game of the doubleheader. Arizona gets their third win of the season against the ranked opponent. They're now three and nine on the season. And if you're Arizona, Michael, as we look ahead to tomorrow, the game at noon, they could get a win and get out of here two and two and still have a chance next weekend against UCLA to make that push to host a regional and a super regional. Hope is not lost for Arizona quite yet. They fought back in a big way. Oh, yeah, Arizona needed this win. And looking forward to tomorrow, you expect to see Yanez back in the circle, but she's already pitched 14 innings this weekend, so it's going to be a big talking point between you and Bill tomorrow on the broadcast. How much does she have left in the tank? Does she have another complete game in her? Is she going to be a little less effective than what we saw yesterday and today? And how quickly does Melissa Lombardi turn to the bullpen and go away from Yanez. And then when she turns to the bullpen, who's it going to be? We saw Samaria Diaz look great for three innings. We saw Megan Clee Thermos struggle and give up quite a few runs in her 2.2 innings of work. And then you saw a really strong outing from Reagan Breedlove. So maybe you'll see Reagan Breedlove be the first player out of the pen after Yanez. And I, I, that's obviously assuming Yanez is starting, but a lot of questions around Oregon's pitchers heading into tomorrow. But recapping today's games, Jordan, I think for Oregon, why did they win that one game today? Why are they ahead in the series right now? It's Yanez being absolutely sensational, and it's obviously Haley Cruz. I mean, Haley Cruz came to the plate seven times today. They only got her out once. Absolutely scorching hot. A day to remember, 
one of the most important and you know most just best days she may have in her Oregon career, frankly, when you add up these two games together. She had RBIs, she had runs scored, she was involved in this Oregon offense in every way, and they absolutely needed her to get that 1-0 one, win earlier, and she almost got them through to the win today. Now you look at Arizona's side of the coin, Jordan, obviously Alyssa Denham was fantastic. She pitched six innings and only allowed the one run, and she came in and closed things out. I expect to see more of her tomorrow as well. She is the reason that Arizona was able to lock it down because she got some huge outs in the sixth and seventh inning. And going back to Melissa Lombardi, I don't think you're as bothered by Gabby Herrera getting out with the bases loaded to end the sixth or Alyssa Brito since she also made contacts popping out to end the seventh. What you're more frustrated by and what I think was a huge turning point in this game is two things that happened before those last at-bats of the inning. Alyssa Brito in the sixth inning attempting to sacrifice bunt and popping out that was a huge swing for the ducks and a huge momentum killer to have that bunt fail and then in the seventh inning ali bunker comes up tries to bunt fails twice and ends up getting caught in an o2 hole and then she strikes out for just the sixth time on the season in over 40 games played to have ali bunker not get the bunt down and then strike out both of those i think were the biggest at bats of this game they both are just failures to execute i know melissa lombardi's huge on that you gotta execute you gotta be able to get those bunts down and if they did get those bunts down i think this is a totally different game so that's a huge point but all in all oregon they've battled arizona they gotta feel great going into tomorrow and a huge game tomorrow if they want to rise up you know into the top 10 in college softball maybe break the top eight and set themselves up for a series next weekend against California as we start talking about, Jordan, the regionals and the super regionals and what you're going to be able to host. We've seen it's pretty clear that for both Oregon and Arizona, there's a home field advantage. Both yeah. these teams play significantly better when they get to host, so it's a huge deal that they're able to host the regionals and maybe the super regionals if they can end the season ranked in the top eight in college softball. Well, Michael, you hit on the most important point that I was going to go to next. The runners left on base. Oregon stranding the bases loaded in the sixth and two on in the seventh. Five of their eight runners left in the last two innings. They had their chances today, Michael. It was not meant to be in game two. And Hannah Bowen gets her eighth win in ten tries. She's eight and two this year. McKenna Thermos suffers the loss. She moves to seven and six. And Denham, Alyssa Denham, gets her first save on the season. 4-3 final in game two. Oregon taking game one, one to nothing. They still lead the series two to one. One final game on deck. It's coming tomorrow at noon. We'll take the air around 11.50. Number 12, Oregon. Number seven, Arizona in the series finale. Only five games left on the season. Tomorrow will be an emotional one. Senior day at the Jane as the Ducks say goodbye to Maddie Hopper, Haley Cruz, Samaria Diaz, Shea Bowden this weekend, as well as, I should mention, Annalisa Williamson. They'll be saying goodbye to her as well. The doubleheader split. Thanks for being here with us all day long. For my broadcasting partner in crime, Michael Stroy, our producer for Game 2, Adam Sussman, this is Jordan Brenner saying good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning at around 11.50 for the finale between Oregon and Arizona. Now let's send it back to our regularly scheduled programming right here on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM.